a cloud. It's all going up. <laughs> so, um, hello, hello. So lots of love, some new faces, which is always a really wonderful thing, and some familiar faces, and some lovely colleagues in here as well, which is really great. I am so I have um, this is one of some more people coming. This is one of three sessions and they're going to be quite long. Um, and you don't if you want to um, bugger off, that's absolutely fine. Some more people coming in. Um, that's absolutely fine, and this will be recorded, so you can you can you know you can catch up with it later on. Uh, we've booked in. We've kind of blocked out until nine o'clock. I think it might be a little bit shorter than that, having looked over what we need to do today. I think the next sessions will be much uh, will be longer. So, what we why we're here is um, I've done quite a lot, uh, and it's probably been you know it's been the really most rewarding part of my job over the last nine, 10 months is that I've been doing quite a lot of um, sessions, one-to-one -one sessions with artists from the Outer Limits Network on um, project funding and also started on uh, Develop Your Creative Practice. And, you know, and also I'm using lots of, because I've been because I'm quite arts council -y by being, by virtue of running a, an MPO. <laughs> it's like, what do these things mean? <laughs> so I might say, so we're re we have regular funding from the, from the arts council. So we have to do a lot of um, uh, reports. We have to do a lot of evaluation. We have to do application so there's quite a lot there is a vocabulary and even for me like I go to board meetings and actually quite a lot of our trustees and our board are quite artsy council and it just at times is really hard and I will try not to do that but inevitably I might use some phrases and stuff and if, if you don't know what they mean just go what does that mean and we're not going to do like hands up well you can just pop your I think there's enough actually we're on one screen at the moment so just pop your hand up if you want to speak and ask something and then that's absolutely fine and I'll go to you, I can see you. Um, and I've done lots of sessions and they've been really great and they've been really inspiring and some people have got Arts Council funding and some people have had have not got their, their applications haven't gone through and at the moment I'm working with three artists on resubmitting their applications. Um, and that's really part of the journey as well, that's a really uh, important part of the journey too so you know not getting your arts council application your application funded is not the end of the world um, and actually they've got better at giving feedback because they never never used to give so you know feedback before um, and it's quite cryptic the feedback I think all of it the whole process is a bit cryptic because I don't think the arts council particularly have that much connection with artists and you know in the and they don't really understand the best way to communicate with artists and they've got much better particularly we've been working with uh, our relationship manager who's been really brilliant and really taken on board the difficulty that artists face writing these applications um they used to just go well we'll come and do a workshop and they do like this beat for an hour and then they just expect artists to be able to get on with it and actually it's a, it's not you need a bit more time with that and they've done a series of events recently with us which has been really brilliant um so the idea is to try and demystify that process so um and why we're here is because i thought why don't we get a group of artists together who are really up for submitting an application in the next couple of months and that's what that call out was. Was there anyone who was really, you know, seriously thinking about it? And I found, and then I, I wanted to structure it so that we would meet together. Today, we're just gonna go through the application, what you physically have to do, and just give you some pointers um, uh, to think about how you start writing it. And then um, we've got four artists here at the moment who are going to do that pro are then going to write a draft and then they put a deadline and then we read the draft together and then they redraft and then we tweak it and then they submit it. 
and those four artists are Mia and and you're, they're going to talk a bit about their projects as well. Uh, Chrissy and Sally. Um, and I thought would, I, I thought it'd be really good to give deadlines because <laughs> I think I'm you know I, this is, deadlines are really good for me as well. Uh, that we we. It, I've had lots of sessions with artists and then it just goes on for months and months and months. And I felt it'd be really great just to, I think sometimes it's just really helpful to have deadlines. And these sessions are open so that you can come and uh, learn from the process that we're going on. And also, if you end up writing an application, I'm really happy to look at it. Um, and you can ask questions during this process as well. Uh, just out of, um everybody here who is thinking of writing an application in the next 12 months great next six months oh yeah rebecca's gonna she's gonna do one as well charlotte great christina next six months yeah in the next three months Yes, there's quite a few of you, so sure. Um, so you do ask questions as we go through this. Obviously, I'm gonna be quite focused on four people, but you are allowed to ask questions. And then also, I'm really happy to read through an application at a later point. Um, oh, somebody's trying to get, somebody's trying to get in. What are your, I'd really love to know what are your feelings about writing an Arts Council application and be truthful. It's just really interesting. Uh, go on, Chrissy. Um, I always find the, the long writing um, just quite intimidating. I feel like if I've got to get funding like privately or investors or come up with the money myself or think quite laterally about it, I tend to be better at that. Um, but when it comes to these applications, I, I sort of left school at 16. I didn't really go to college or anything. So I always feel like I've got to be really academic to okay. be able to do it, is my feeling. Great. I mean, I would answer that the, with the try. Yeah, I think that is often the problem I see in people's applications that they try to be academic rather than kind of passionate and truthful and human. And there is, I mean, obviously there are some particular things that you have to hit. So I think try and be yourself in these. The ones that we, the ones that you sense a human being in it. I think it are the ones that get through, I think, and the passion that it is are the ones that get through. I think we do tend to get a bit, the moment we start writing an application the Arts Council want to see, we think that that's what they want, then it becomes really tricky. Is there any, anyone else, any uh, feelings about Harry? What are your, how does it feel facing Um that? Yeah, for me, it's obviously quite an experience just because I've recently graduated from uni, so it's doing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'm trying to find out as much as I can, like as uh, Christine was saying about like getting funding through other means, like I've done that before, like I've been in supermarkets with a bucket, putting people's shopping in bags for them or uni projects. And yeah, for that, it's also another thing different, like trying to find out because I heard from like one person that if you have a learning disability myself I have on the autistic spectrum is that you can get a special grant for an assistant which I'm at the moment trying to look into but it's not really been much uh, feedback from the arts council's end. Yeah definitely you can get access you can get somebody to help I think they give like 300 pounds a day for somebody to help um, and that might be um, Harry, because I haven't done it, but I know I'm working with a, a, a deaf artist who is, has just secured that. Um, so I can definitely find out why, you know, if you, we, it might be worth us having a chat and, and trying to find out why that has happened. Mm. Um, what do, you, do you know when you tried, when did you try to get, access, get the access? Um, it was just after sort of the first lockdown going into summer when oh, right. Theatres started to open up a little bit again, but still, obviously, yeah, the restrictions here and there. 
yeah that's not great so we should definitely and I'm, i probably need a bit of time to go through the process and the but, but why don't we do a, a session together harry yeah no. and we go through that but that's absolutely right for everybody is that the access grants are there and available and, and that they've probably made it really complicated how to do that which is really useful mm -hmm. so anyone anyone any other thoughts what are the fears go on danny um, I was just going to say for Harry, um, I've got quite bad dyslexia. So uh, my sister actually is, she's based down in the Southwest, but she actually helps me um, with that support thing for um, the Arts Council Fund. So if you want, I can give you her email and she could potentially become like, uh, like an advocate to help you with the application form filling in. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was going to say, if you uh, just like drop your email address in... Um sell her the chat that'll be great thanks yeah not a problem at all mate that's brilliant danny and did you find how did you uh, how was the process in in getting that access did uh, it you... took a bit of time like it sort of helped um my sister's quite good at um she's very good at she can read an application form and she's very good at breaking down exactly what's meant to be from that so when i was trying to do it by myself i didn't uh -huh. I, I just didn't get anywhere and then just going to her, just as a person, she's just very good at going, this is actually what they're asking you for instead of what you're reading it as. Great. Um, and then she helped me with that to get her on board to be sort of like a support person with uh, any time I'd done an application form for Arts Council. And then That's she also brilliant. helped quite a lot with the progression um, from constantly getting rejected to it starting to be acknowledged and put forward to the next phases because she can just break down exactly what it asks. What, what they ask, I think that's brilliant. I think it's always really good to let someone else uh, uh, be an outside eye on the application. I think that's really, really useful, particularly if they've got you know a particular understanding of what, what your needs are. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, Harry's talking about there is, a, um, there is a pot of money that you can apply for to pay somebody to do that. Did you do that, Danny? Um. Yes. So, uh, no, we, we done it. Uh, we didn't apply for the pot of money. Um, she uh, just because she was my sister, she helped me with that. Okay. And then she, she gets uh, the Arts Council pay for her services. OK, brilliant. Great. So that's how it works. Me, so it doesn't okay. cost me anything. Yeah. Brilliant. Great. OK, anything else? Any other any other anxieties? Go on, Hannah. Sorry, uh, it is just so overwhelming, like, because yeah. I'm completely new to it. And like, I go on the website, and then I'm like, I just don't even know where to start. Where to start, yeah. They don't make it easy, to be honest. There are loads of documents. And um, so hopefully, we're going to go through what your pro what you probably had to do is, you know, the websites that you go to and try and navigate our way through it. I'm just going to um, I mean, the first thing is, let's, you know, what is the Arts Council? The Arts Council was set up after the Second World War. Um, it is a, you know, it's been going for a long time. It's an, it, it's an unusual thing because it is obviously, we pay for it, <laughs> remember that. <laughs> it comes out of our taxes. That's really, really important to know that you have paid for this money. Um, and also everybody else has paid for it. So that's interesting when we're thinking about, you know, our projects and who are they for. Um, that money, the Arts Council was an arm's length body from the government, whereas in some countries, the funding comes directly from the government. So, it, which is useful because obviously as politics change and agendas change, then obviously that can sort of interfere with who is funded and who isn't. Um, we are very lucky in the UK to have an Arts Council in, for example, I've worked in India a fair bit and there is no funding in India, for example, for artists. You know, it, 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 we are lucky. It is, so it's a brilliant, wonderful thing and you have paid for it. It's not as great, you know, arts funding in the UK is pretty bad. That part of money is pretty small compared to Germany, 
or France or other or Sweden or you know or Scandinavian countries which are probably three or four times that amount um, but it is still there and their intentions are really really great so the thing about the Arts Council is they are at, you know this process this application process is kind of like an open call um, the project's funding is rolling, so you can apply at any time. There aren't particular deadlines, which in one way that makes it harder for you because you have to give yourself your own deadline. Um, and I would just say that the Arts Council are looking for people to deliver what they have decided the Arts Council is about. So there is a particular kind of strategy and that strategy is, and we will look at it very briefly, well, what do you think the Arts Council is there for? What, what, what would their strategy be? What do we think it might be? Anyone? Anyone? Harry? Um, it is to assist in the development of, you can say, the cultural growth of the nation by providing opportunities for creative individuals to express what they can attribute and what they can bring as it can help with many things like mental health teaching people who have like learning difficulties of, of how to cope within the real world how to give young people say confidence if they're doing something like public speaking to be able to stand up in front of a crowd of people and deliver a speech confidently Along the number of things which very difficult to sort of explain, really. Oh, no, I think that's pretty brilliant. The creative development of the nation. I think that's pretty, and and you know, in those really amazing details that you spoke about about the well-being and what you're talking about, public speaking. I think, yeah, absolutely, we know exactly what culture does, and particularly around performing arts as well what skills, what well-being that enables the nation to have. So yes, it's about the cultural development of the nation. So really these arts council, you know, they're looking for people to do their job for them. And this is really what you, you are doing is you're pitching and saying, I can do your job. I can do those things that you want to do for the nation. So it's not, I think often we, we spin it around the other way and make it as if it is uh, a trial or a test <laughs> rather than offering up these brilliant ideas and going I, I can deliver what you want us to do so always you know think of it in that way as you approach this application uh, Rebecca so Rebecca is uh, uh, an associate artist of, uh, of the Queen's Theatre and, and we work together recently on your Arts Council application, which we are going to have a little look at some of it this evening. Um, and do you, and do you, that was your first application. Do you want to just talk about the whole process? What was it like before and doing it and after? Yeah, so I was really overwhelmed and freaked out by the idea of having to do a project grants application. I had done one developing your creative practice application before, um, and that was unsuccessful. So, and the developing your creative, pra creative practice form is a lot shorter um, than the project grants form. So I felt like I just didn't know where to start, just like you were saying earlier, Hannah, just like complete overwhelm, no idea what I'm doing. And I came to a session like this where Doug kind of literally just showed what the form was. And I think, um, I guess like opening the box and I, I don't know turning on the light and seeing that there's no ghost was quite helpful because then I was like okay all right so this is how I would systematically go about it um, it was it was hard it took a lot of time um, and especially trying to juggle it around paid work and all sorts of other stuff it's a challenge um, but it's we got there um, I think one of the things that I found is that I started, I thought I knew my project really, really well, and I did, but I didn't really know what I would actually do with the time until I sat down and started to write the application. I just thought i will be amazing to get funding, end of, but I didn't actually think what, how, what, what am I going to do with all this money and time? So 
I think that was one thing that took quite a lot of time in, in, in the first instance was talking to my collaborator Daisy about what it was that we wanted to do if, if we got it because that is kind of the bedrock of your application what what you're going to do um so yeah that was the sort of first surprise really and just sort of really defining what would be the most useful um process to go through and then yeah just kind of hacking away at it really it's like just like I felt like I had like a hammer and a bit of a rock and just sort of chipping away at it it's it's tough but it is doable um and you know if if you're if you're able to sort of set aside the time and go for it I think even if it's unsuccessful you will come out of it understanding your project a hell of a lot better Eve and and you'll be ready to sort of go through it again um so yeah but just super super helpful having help and encouragement and someone just to look over it because I think mine took this two academic stance first and I remember having a session with you Doug where you were just like put yourself back into it again I'd kind of strip myself out of it because I thought that I needed to write in a different way or things like that so yeah I think that's quite a uh, key um is um I've i uh, obviously I have to do kind of big the big application for the theatre but I've done seven before this because I ran in my own company and they went from one and a half thousand up to 120,000 and I think um the the brilliant the thing that I learned in those early like you Rebecca just said as well is that I found them really useful mm. because you learn exactly that what your project was <laughs> by having to write about it and what you wanted to do actually the project changed and i've seen this with artists recently writing them is that that project develops and changes as they write the application so i think i think that's equally uh, that as a primary thing it's really useful too yeah but, and it helps you take stock of what you've already done as well because there's a section yeah. towards the end about tell us about how far you've got thus far and like i'd been working on this show on and off for about two years and bear in mind that project grants was suspended for six months before i applied so i probably would have done the application beforehand but they had to sort of um stop it because of coronavirus so yeah i think it, it just documenting all of the stuff that you've done so far even that that's just meetings thinking dreaming you know watching stuff to be inspired and yeah, I think that's also really useful is kind of appreciating the work that you put in even to this point right now. Great, Mia, you, you, you had your hand up. Hello, um, I just wanted to quickly ask, I wasn't aware, um, do you set the am amount or does Ace look at it and then say you can have this much and then yeah, I, how does that work? You have to you have to set the amount. So we'll go through it. You have to write a budget. Okay. <laughs> Which isn't as terrifying as it sounds, but you have to work out how much money you want. And that's a bit daunting because of what I see in all the applications is everyone uh, puts in too little. Because <laughs> I think we're always a bit terrified of asking too much. Okay. Like, and you have to pay yourself properly and they want you to pay yourself properly if you if you really go under and go around and deliver all of this work for like 2p they won't <laughs> give it to you they want to know that you're actually paying yourself and paying people properly so don't skimp you know right, you okay. really put the right amount of money but i'm gonna i'm gonna help you go through that anyway so i'm gonna start screen sharing I don't want to see my emails. So uh, here, I'm just going to collapse the gallery and do. Um, it's always a bit weird when you do this uh, screen sharing, isn't it? And you don't look at anyone because you suddenly go, "Oh my, is anyone actually there listening <laughs> to me?" So make noise sometimes <laughs> um, in this session. So. Um, we are so the arts council this is a uh, this is a tricky thing but um i'm going to put all these links in the chat at some point so you'll have these 
The Arts Council has a 10 year strategy, which they've just released. Well, no, they released no, nearly a year ago, which is 2020 to 2030. And I won't go into it in detail, but it is here. Um, it is a shift. I mean, it's a development of what the, um, I mean, the main title is Let's Create. And that really actually is a lot about what it is. Um, it was, uh, uh, it was, I think the last one was Arts for All. I can't remember exactly what it was. The last time, the last strategy, the kind of leading narrative of, of it was that everybody has access to culture. This one has a kind of radical shift on it, which is that everybody has the right to be creative. So it, it is quite a significant shift. I mean, participatory work was always kind of wrapped up in the previous strategy, but this has really shifted it away from excellence and taking excellent art to the people and ensuring that that excellent art reaches as many people as possible to everybody can be an artist and everybody can be can be creative, which is quite a provocative shift. And, and to be honest, I think it's very much a recognition of politically where we have arrived and a realization that culture can really play a significant part as uh, as harry was talking about uh, about the well-being of a country and particularly around social cohesion as well which obviously is a very very serious issue within the uk so it really is putting culture and creativity at the heart of um, of every individual and also at the heart of communities that really don't have access to that uh, uh, creative uh, opportunities. So your, the application has a little bit uh, that looks at the way you have to respond to the this strategy. It is uh, worth a read. Um, I remember Rebecca, your Ollie last time made a really great Point. So, a country transformed by culture, bring bring us together, happier, healthier, to excite, inspire, delight, to rich, uh, to enrich our lives. So they're looking for people to do that for them. Um, and I remember uh, Rebecca uh, Ollie made a really great point about um, the uh, easy read version of this strategy, um, yeah. which is um, just below on this website and. To be honest, there is a lot, all the Arts Council documents are, the major documents have different versions for access. So it has the kind of really, really wordy one, and then it has a, a kind of easy read version. And I always find the easy read version really should just be the, the version that they put out there. Definitely, yeah, just always, it's, it's basically like, you know if you go and see a Shakespeare that you've never seen and you just quickly google it to figure out the plot so that if you don't understand it you know what to say in the interval it's kind of like that basically it just there's pictures they make it easy for you to understand it yeah definitely just do the easy read first so this is the easy read of uh the let's create which is on that website which I give you and so it really just breaks down it really cuts through all of their waffle and really explains exactly what it is that they want to do. Um, so this, this, this version is a really great read and that will help you when you need to tackle that. Uh, it's a tick box that you, a, 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 it's a, you have to show what bit of the strategy do you think your project uh, it, it, uh, relates to, but we will, we will come to that in a little bit. So, um, yeah, so I think there's very much a move from this, this uh, focus on excellence in art. I mean, they still talk about excellence and quality, but it's much more about the creativity of the individual. So tonight, obviously, we're, we're looking at project grants. Rebecca's already spoken about um, to develop your creative practice. And that is a relatively new stream of funding. And it's actually open now and closes. It's not a rolling application. It is. Uh, it, it it comes in uh, windows. So the the current window is open until the 18th of February. So that's quite soon. So some of you might be. Some of your projects might actually sit within 
um, develop your creative practice. So I just want to highlight something which does might resolve that for you now. These are the two funds here. So develop your creative practice is only open to individuals. Project grants is open to individuals and arts organizations and other organizations. Develop your own practice. And you, they've put a lot of money in both of these pots because they they recognize that obviously freelancers are pretty buggered at the moment. And so then these projects, these funds are not really, they're less targeted at organizations. So it's a really good time to apply. It's very competitive, but there is more money for individuals at this moment in time. Developing your creative practice, you are at an early to mid point stage in your practice and you need support to make a major change. And that's very important to make a major change or carry out a pe period of focused development work. It's not really about a project. You can have a project wrapped in if making something is going to help you make that major change. Um, but it's not really project uh, based. This, the one we're talking about tonight is much more project focused. You may be, so in the project, on the project grants, you may be an emerging artist all the way up to an international touring company. Your project may be creating new work, reaching new audiences, research and development or tour or something totally different. So uh, in project grants, you can, you can apply to do a show, you can apply to write a play, you can apply to do some research and development. Rebecca, yours is re research and development, isn't it, on the next stage? Yeah, it's a mixture of research and development and organisational development. So you're developing the show for the next stage and the organisational development is about building partnerships and with venues and exactly yeah. and a network for touring that that and that yeah. gives you the time to establish those relationships. Yeah. Developing your creative practice, the main beneficiary is you. The project, the main beneficiaries are us usually the people engaging with the project. So the people who are watching it, the people who are participating, whereas develop your, there isn't any kind of participation or audience in developing your creative practice. It's completely about you. Projects are a little bit about you because you're making it and they're interested in your development. They do ask you about your development. So that's a bit confusing, but ultimately they're very interested for project grants about who is going to uh, benefit from it in terms of audiences and if you're doing like research and development like Rebecca they want to the, the narrative within that is what the future of that project is you write a little bit about that of who is going to benefit in the long term from that project when Rebecca actually takes it on tour and performs it and does her workshops around it even though she's not doing all of that now develop um develop your creative practice the grants from 2000 to 10,000 Project grants are 1,000 to 100,000. You can go over 100,000 if your project is of national interest. And then you have to ask them first if you can apply for more. You have to put in an expression of interest if you, uh, if you want to apply for more. DYCP, I'm not going to keep saying develop your creative process. DYCP is um, uh, up to a year. The project lasts for a year. Project grants can last up to three years. Um, DYCP, there are four deadlines a year. Project grants, you can apply at any time. There are no deadlines. This is the useful bit. Develop your creative practice applications to take up to night to get a turnaround on an answer. It takes up to nine weeks from the relevant deadline. And project grants, if, so there are two parts to it. You can apply for under, under 15,000 and the application is slightly easier. And that's the one that we're gonna look at tonight. Um, or, and you get six weeks turnaround before you get a decision. And they're, they're pretty good at that, actually. They don't, they don't go beyond or they get it, or they come a little bit earlier. Um, and then applications over 15,000 take uh, 12 weeks. Um, develop your creative practice. You can apply to two rounds within a 12 month period. 
project grants you can apply anytime unless you're waiting for a decision on a previous application. You can't put two applications in at the same time. If you're an organization and you're applying for project grants, like your company, you, and you can, as an individual, apply for a DYCP at the same time. You can't do two project grants for the same organization at the same time. Is there anyone who, is, who goes that DYCP might be for me? or you all here for project grants. Anyone for DYCP? You might want to be doing one anyway. Great. So you you're more for- I do think they make it slightly easier to then move on to project grants after I found it less daunting. I think having done DYCP, even though it didn't go through, just having like been in Grantium before, you know, was helpful. Yeah, and there are some similar questions, aren't there? I yeah. think the major thing about the DYCP, it has to be quite a significant change in your development as a creative. It can't just be part of your normal progression. So if it's doing the same kind of work or, or it's another, you're creating a new body of work that is on that same journey. So for example, Charmaine Childs, who is uh, an artist from this network, she has a, she's now being used as a case study is that she was, is a strong lady. So she trained in circus, she's a circus performer. And then um, she really wanted to shake up her practice and work with a writer and a director and start making more theater, theater work. So new writing, I mean, still using lots of her skills as a, as a circus performer, but moving in a completely different direction. So it could be also, you could be develop your own, your creative practice of going from a, 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 an actor to a playwright if you wanted to. And often that's about working with new people, new collaborators, mentors. You can also do, uh, you can go abroad and do an incredible research trip if you want as well. That is what well, we can't at the moment, but <laughs> maybe at some point. So they're quite, but it has to be something significantly different that you are doing um, compared to what you normally do. Brilliant. Um, so, when we, obviously, when you, where am I going? When you go to the, you will go to, this will be the first page that you rock up on. Hearts Council National Lottery Project, and I'm sure some of you have been here before. Um, there is some new guidance around this. Um, so they changed the guidance after, uh, obviously the pan, after they, so they closed project grants for six months because they wanted to sort of work out what they needed to do in as an emergency response and it took them quite a while. And then they reopened them and they slightly changed these here. Um, this is a useful, explanation of what the difference is. Because of the circumstances during COVID-19 period, we'll be particularly keen to support applications from individual creative practitioners, including time to think and plan. So not necessarily, you know, project grants are normally about, I'm gonna do this show, or I'm gonna make this piece of art, or I'm gonna make this dance piece, and I'm gonna tour it. Um, it's much less about that because obviously we can't do that at the moment. So, uh, and it really focuses on research and development activity, organizational development activity. So Rebecca's obviously really hits those two there. Uh, live active, it will, it, you can still do live activity, but that can be safely delivered within, the, within this period. So if you were doing live streaming or you were doing something socially distanced, you have to, um, you have to, part of the application is to show that you can do it during this period and you've, you have factored into the application um, any considera consideration around uh, what the impact of COVID-19 would be on the project. They won't fund something that, they, that you can't currently, 
currently do an activity that closely aligns with our equality objectives. We'll come to that. That's very much in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. So obviously diversity has really become a, a, a very, uh, it always has been a really central part of uh, the Arts Council and its applications, but there is a priority on applications that actively align with the, the equality objectives, but we'll go through those. It sounds like a kind of, posh term, but I think we probably collectively all know what the equality objectives would be, um, but we will, we will come to that. So uh, that's in what's changed. Um, there are, there's lots of information here, how to apply information sheets. They do find the information that it can take you off into <laughs> a bit of a labyrinth this website so I'm going to try and avoid um, doing that and show you where you really should go is my this is a really interesting one this I always used to find this quite irritating this take the quiz is my project ready um, but actually I think looking back on it I think it's actually really useful and um, I will get our four to start to answer these questions. And it's not a test. This is actually, everyone should go through these at this point. It's a little bit like Rebecca saying about, is the project ready? Um, I knew, learned more about my project when I, you know, what was I actually going to do? The interesting thing with the applications that I have read recently, most of them don't talk about the art actually don't talk about the project they're making and what they're actually going to do in the time that they are being funded to do it like loads of them and when um, and also it's i think uh, danny you were talking about this earlier on i think about your sister being really helpful often when i'm doing these one-to-one -one sessions with artists when i get i read their application and when i get them to talk about the application to me it's so much clearer and it's so much more exciting than the thing that they have put down. So I think it's really useful to talk it through to somebody, these questions that you will have to answer, or record yourself talking, you know, speaking it, and then listen, listen, listen back. Does your project focus on one or more of our supported art forms? So Mia, does your... Yes. Which one, which one does it do? Um, uh, theatre. Um, uh, sorry, there'll be, there's an element of, of dance, um, theatre and visual art. Great, brilliant. So, I mean, it could be combined art or, you know, you have to work out which one, which one it is, yeah. but yeah, clearly you're hitting loads of those. Uh, it's really music is a new what is relatively new that they've added into there because obviously there's a kind of different funding stream completely different body that funds music so if you are thinking of music just look up I don't know exactly because it's not my forte but exactly why music is in there um but it's not like making a record it's much more um about it probably is around um enabling creativity within it within communities using music in a, a much more participatory way or it's a piece of or it's a piece of inter it might be an interactive installation piece that is using music rather than it being like a record or and notice film isn't in here because film is funded by the by the bfi so great yours is yes and it will take you to another one so this is just making sure that people don't apply without having thought all these things through. Um, Le Anne, do you have a clear idea of what your project is about and what you want it to achieve? Think about what it is you want to do and why you want to do it. What do you want to get out of your project and how will you deliver it? Can you describe it in one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. That's several questions. <laughs> do you want to have I a go? Also, yeah, I wish there was like a I think so button. <laughs> um, I, I've got to read it again. I'm sorry. I can't just do deal with one read. Hang on, I've got to read it again. Sorry, I didn't read it. Think about what it is. 
go on, what are you going to say? Do, do, maybe just answer the first one. Do you have a clear idea of what your project is about and what you want it to achieve? Well, yes, I do. Yeah, I do. Come on. But I can't, I mean, so basically I'd like to, I'd like to write, I'd like to, I would like to write a play and also therefore continue my development as a playwright and then I'd then like to put it on in a space in the air in the local area but then I'm like but hang on a minute that depends on the local area wanting my piece do you know what I mean so it's like that's what I want but it doesn't mean what I what I want is what I get uh, um, that, but that's great so you want to write a play um develop yourself this is great mm. because these are all going to come up in the application okay and you want to put it in your why in your local so what's the what is the play so yeah so the play is to uh develop so to develop the princess to Blue story that i did but turn that into a full play and, and then what is what is that story and then that's the story of uh a black woman who entered a beauty pageant in south end on sea in 1908 yeah and why do you want to do it because it's a really important piece of Black Essex history. Yeah, why Why is a theatre piece? Uh, and a theatre piece, <laughs> thanks a theatre piece. Why, why theatre piece? Yeah. Um, because I feel like that's a great way of reaching the local audience. It's more accessible, it's an accessible Yeah, form. yeah, yeah, more yeah. accessible, yeah. And why in your local audience? Why a local audience? Um, because I feel because South Bend needs to have stories about itself told and also, it, uh, sorry, say the question again, Doug. Why, why your local audience? Why does it need to be local? Um, it's good South Bend needs to have stories yeah. about itself, yeah. And why does it need to be local? I just want to say, because it's really fucking important and it should be, but that's- Yeah, really why is that important? Why is it why, important? And why is it important? Because, um, because or else it because or else can it I, may I say something Anne oh yeah. yeah please because I think it's important because I am and I'm sure you feel the same sick and tired of everybody's view of Essex and South End yeah and actually we're a fabulous place we should embrace it and cherish it and embrace everybody who's there and we should share these fantastic things that happen, but instead of which, it's all about being from Essex or Towie or something. And it's so boring. It's so bloody boring that we should embrace what you've got and everyone should see it, should start out in South End, and then it should go right the way to the West End. Sorry, that's that, yeah, definitely brilliant. That exactly. Great. That's that's the answer. That was amazing. Right. And it I is think that. Also, it yeah. is that without a doubt, Sally, that's it. And also, so it is a, it is a, it is about somebody who's from a lower, a lower socioeconomic background, isn't it? So, yeah, it it ha, it can be for audiences from that background as well, aren't it? Yeah, it's, it's a quite an accessible piece, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, I yeah. think you know within that, it's also because you want it to reach people who probably don't normally go to the theatre. Yeah, definitely. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, there you are. Got loads. It's hard to put that in one sentence. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. That was really hard. But they don't, and also they don't ask you to put it in in one sentence. Yeah, um, do you? <laughs> yeah, and we went into this, so this is a bit naughty. But um, so Sally, who do you know who your project is for? How they will experience it, and have you thought about how you will reach them? Yes. Who is your project for? Um, my project is for everybody who is interested in where they live. So if you live in South End or Thought Bay or uh, anywhere in Essex where you follow the Thames right the way up to London, you might find things about uh, what I want to do is I want to I want people to understand how fantastic it is to be on the edge of the Thames to understand that actually we've got so much culture and so much stuff going on. Queen Elizabeth I started out giving her speech about the Armada from Tilbury Docks. We've got the opening on the other side at Queen, in Queenborough. 
we've got Dead Man's Island where all the Hulk ships dumped the bodies and they all flew, they all, they were just chucked out onto the, onto this island and now they're just washing up across the beaches over on South End as well as that. Uh, I want everyone to understand and learn about, but learn about it in a, in a less stuffy way. Mm -hmm. So again, this kind of more accessible form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also we can talk and about I the power. Think, sorry, I, I think that they will experience it by, um, I want to take three plays based on the um, uh, stories that, that have been developed. And I want to take three plays. I want to start off in the woods um, at Belfair's where um, people who don't normally go to the theatre but often go to the cafe there can see something right. then take it further down to the water side and then actually finally move it up, up the Thames to a different area and I think that it will reach them I've also I also want to do some of it by radio so if you can't mm -hmm. get out you can listen to it by on the radio okay good I'm gonna just go take you back though do you know it sounds like a brilliant project it's really great there are lots of things in there to unpack so it's really great how people talk about the project we get really excited and there are loads of things in there do you know who is your project for you said everybody you've got to be much more specific okay, much more specific. I think it's for people who it's for people who don't generally think about going to the theatre mm -hmm. they think that people who are like me who speak like I do, they make a judgment. And those are the sorts of people who go to the palace or to the West End. They yeah. don't necessarily feel that they can be part of that, not because they can't afford it and not because they don't want to, but perhaps because they feel they've been excluded. Yeah, great. So excluded is good. Yeah. So, and, and other terms, we kind of, obviously South End, Tharok, that S, you know, that Thames Estuary corridor is um, a cultural, what we call cultural cold spot, which means that there is less cultural engagement. And there's, the language is changing around that as well, because obviously it's a kind of deficit vocabulary. And what we were talking about is it's underserved or underrepresented. And you're saying you're going to change that. You're going to you're going to represent them. You're going to you're like going to serve to those communities. Them. I'd like, yeah, but great. also I, I'd like to. I I I I work a lot in there's a work that I do. I work a lot with young people, and I think that's I know they're having a terrible time currently. But I'd also like to encourage the opportunity for older people who are isolated. Mm -hmm. to be part of it because perhaps they can't actually get to the theatre or can't get to a venue because yeah. they're not able to. So by so, possibly doing radio, then they yeah. can tune into that. So you're making it more inclusive. Yeah, great. That's brilliant. So uh, underserved, so we'll, go, we'll go into my, So basically you are writing the application as you answer these questions, yeah? How they would experience it, you talked about... Um, in non-traditional theatre spaces, which is really great because it means it's more, it's probably less daunting than going into a theatre. You're talking about radio so that uh, our isolated ageing population can experience it. Um, ha so, and have you thought about how you will reach them? So radio is more about how they experience it. It's how you reach them is how are they, is your marketing plan, how are they gonna know about it? Um, yeah, I've, I've spent a lot of time. I have to say, I'm, I'm not, oh, I'm not yeah, going to Instagram. But I would, I would hope that some of the budget would go towards Instagram and social media, and as well as that, I would like to mix it with actual physical poster and, yeah. Great. and also perhaps you know, advertising through a radio medium or... Yeah, so that, that if there's any dig digital poverty that, yeah, because yeah. we rely on social media and we rely on emails and we do need to think about digital poverty. Obviously, the pandemic has really shown that up, but yeah. You know, on this one about how will you reach people, it's the language of that question I find quite difficult sometimes because mm. it sort of suggests that um, sections of humans are sort of separate from each other in a different way and so one of the things I put in mind is I was like I live in the local yeah. area and I talk to people in Tesco like I live here so of course I'd, 
of uh, it's not that it, it's easier to reach people because you if you like, I talk to people on my allotment on my dog yeah. walk at the doctor not too much at the moment obviously but you know it's I think that's one thing that helped me to overcome how I felt about that question because like, well, I'm a member of I'm a member of this community, community myself. Yeah. So, absolutely and I think people often don't do that it's like why aren't you calling on your networks which is either grass you know really grassroots but like Harry in the supermarket with his bucket you know often I think we get most of them most of the applicant the applications I see is always about Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and obviously they're really different demographics that use those anyway so yeah absolutely Rebecca I think that kind of face-to-face -face. also word of mouth as well it's really, really yeah. important too, and how you how you create that. Great. So we've we've answered loads of that. Danny's got his hand up. Oh, Danny, I'm sorry, I haven't got the full uh, gallery no, on. I was just going to say, um, there's a really good website called Audience Finder, and um, the Arts Council, I think, gave them a budget to research who all your different demographics are. So you can go on there and it breaks down who your audience are into categories. And then what it does, for example, something called one of the categories called multiculturals, it then gives you the age range, their demographic sort of like background, how they communicate. And it gives you all these different things that will help you towards answering this question. And then not only that, you then can go on a map and that map will show you which theatres have got the most of those um, demographics within the different categories that Audience Finder have established. So then you know which, say you're going to do something called like uh, 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 doorstep doormats or something like that, which is people who are 65 who will only go to the theatre once a year, but it will then go right. So if you want to get people of that age range of that demographic who can only be advertised through this way, these are the theatres they go to these are the days they generally go and these are the times that they generally go. So you can actually figure out based on who you think your audience are just by clicking on audience finder. And then you can see if you're going to do a tour or you're going to do, um, uh, you wanted to do like a three week, week run, you can exactly figure out who your audience are and the best way to communicate and connect with them. And that will help you answer this question as well. And that's called audience finder. And again, yeah. it's covered by the uh, Arts Council. Yeah, and it's a it's a it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because they've broken up the population into these kind of identities, haven't they? But they're they're sort of they are useful, and and I do find referencing it shows the arts council that you've done some research and some thinking around who, if it's a kind of traditional piece of theatre, for example, of who you know who you you thought about who you're targeting which is obviously comes up a little bit early on. So that's brilliant, Danny. Thanks for flagging that up. That's really, really useful. Um, uh, Kristin, Chrissy, have you planned your project budget and thought about how much you will need from us? I mean, I, I think I will probably be one of those people that don't ask for enough or that go on the low side mm -hmm. of it because I don't think they'll give me as much. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know where to pitch it, but I don't know how much of that's me just not being confident in saying, well, actually, this needs this many weeks rehearsal, this needs X, Y, and Z, and that will come to 15,000. Yeah, Rebecca, do you want? Were you just? How did you? How did you feel about doing your budget? Um, I didn't know. I wouldn't. I think I probably lied when I said yes to this because I didn't know how much I needed or wanted until I sort of, because of course that ties into figuring out what you actually want to do, and I didn't really know how mm. I'd actually spend mm. the time. So I think the first thing that you would need to do is figure out what you want to do with the time, and then you can figure out who's involved in that physically what you're going to need where you're going to do it and then you can literally start to tot it up bit by bit um yes there's def even now um after I've done my application and it's gone through um I'm looking at kind of what I'd said and there's certain things where I have kind of done myself out of little things here and there and then you think gosh I should have sort of you know, really, uh, I, you know, for example, I said that I could do one 
specific thing over the course of one day and it's actually about two and a half days yeah. work so I've sort of massively overestimated or underestimated myself in terms of kind of finances and what things really truly cost so I think sitting down and figuring all that out and just t- and it just becomes like a massive shopping list in the end yeah. basically um and if you want to buy objects or I think there's a you, you can definitely we applied to get some things that are actual things um and you know you can research that and find it out and tot it all up um but yeah, yeah I sort of, I had to do this as I went along and to be honest the budget was being finalized right up until the point where I said submit yeah yeah don't I mean don't yeah and excuse my language don't fuck you fuck yourself over financially because you've got to deliver that project and if you've I mean what obviously we know this is that artists I've read an application recently where all the artists were giving all their work in kind (laughs) and you're like why are you doing that you're applying for an arts council application (laughs) and I know old trunk that the you Sadie and Sarah, we've got her, their application here that we might look at as well, is that they didn't pay themselves for the no. first couple of projects, you know, and you're like, what are you doing? You're applying to the Arts Council, you need to pay yourself because yeah. we end up subsidising ourselves, subsidising the industry. And it is here to don't, you mustn't be out of pocket doing a project. The yeah. other thing is we put in a, um, so you can put in a contingency budget, right? Yeah. And we put in, I think normally people put in 5%, but we put in 10% because of COVID, um, because I'd heard that that's what someone else had done. And uh, it's incredibly useful because, you know, for example, a rehearsal space, we're doing two weeks in two separate rehearsal spaces. We're doing one week in a theatre, Queen's Theatre, and we're doing another week in a a music venue because we want to test out how the project behaves in two different spaces. Mm -hmm. And the music venue um, has had to change because when I wrote the application, submitted it in the beginning of November, wasn't necessarily anticipating another national lockdown. So the costs of the music venue have um, moved slightly. So you do, you will use some of the contingency. So, you know, that is... um, one thing that that we were able to to do and it does really really help you to just sort of breathe and even if it just goes into your producing time because we did a a, is it 10 percent producing budget i think i put into mine in the end yeah 10 percent um and we're producing the project between ourselves myself and daisy and again you know that when you figure it out i think it's about 10 days worth of producing time um, and it just goes like that, especially in the pandemic when you've got a lot of different changing situations. Yeah. So your contingency can help you pay for your time when you're like needing to change the schedule for the 14th time because of whatever reason, you know. And, and so, I always, always remember you, you know, you're spending time on this, on doing this now, like the amount of time that you put <laughs> into actually writing an Arts Council application, you've already subsidised the project. So make sure when you actually do it, <laughs> make sure you are actually, you know. Can I ask about match funding? Because I have like a couple of thousand raised already. Is it worth mentioning your match funding? Or we'll not? get to that. It's really helpful to have match funding. So if you look, see here, it says... We've temporarily removed the need for a minimum of 10% match funding, which you would normally have to have for these applications, but they've removed it because of the pandemic. But if you've got match funding, then they're more likely, or if you've got in-kind support that Rebecca has just spoken about. And in-kind support is a theatre, you know, it can be many things. It can be, uh, it could be... I have you a space what, being given to me. So would that be a space that, that I can that's use in kind. first read-ins and stuff? So that's yeah. in Eden Studios, that's been given to me. So I can use that. Can I put that down as in kind? You put that as in kind. So I, Rebecca's got the rehearsal space and we go, that would be £800 a week. So that's £800 in kind. And right, there's... Yeah. Oh, does it more than that? I probably about, said more than that. It's, it's about two grand on the website. I was it. I was it, but yeah. yeah. Um, and then we... You might have uh, you might have a a psychologist who has given going. I don't worry, you don't have to pay me. I'll work with you on that. I want to work with a psychologist on this particular project, and they give them their services in kind. You put a figure to that, so or someone you're borrowing a, a video camera from somebody. Put that as higher what it would cost 
to have those things. And before you know it, you've got this lovely lump of money, a figure, and the arts council, that's really great because we're not paying for that. And that person has managed to manage to put that in place. If you can get another small grant, a funding grant from somewhere else, then funding breeds funding. <laughs> So if you can if you can get a small grant from somewhere else, then that you know that does that does help. But it, it's not so um, horrific at the moment because obviously the pandemic. They realise also they realise that other funding streams are really competitive and are really difficult to get at the moment. And like Rebecca said, you can also buy things. You know, if you want if you need to buy a camera, you buy a camera. That can be part of it. You can buy physical things uh, that then are yours afterwards. So that's absolutely fine. So. We've got this and um, we are going to move on. So we're already writing the application. So when we get to the application, it's going to be much easier. So it is worth answering some of these, not in full, just ha ha have tackled some of these questions. Are you working with partners or other organisations to deliver your project? Working with other people or organisations can be an important part of managing your project. If you need to do this to deliver your project, have you thought about who they are and how they will be involved? I think... Sorry, Doug, um, Harry's got a question which just relates to the previous one. Yeah, go on, Harry. Uh, it's on the um, Oh, it's on chat. the chat. Sorry, I'm just trying to manage so many things at the same time. Where's my chat? Oh. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, please, I can't find so my chat. Says, if he's... Oh, sorry, Harry, I'm just going to say it. Sorry. Um, yeah, if someone can get you a theatre space to perform in London at the cost of, like, mates' rates rather than, like, the usual higher cost, does that yeah. kind, of, kind, of, uh, kind of support? That's an interesting one, yeah. I would... I mean, I would put the... Put how much you're going to have to pay, but then also put a chunk... What, what the bit that they've reduced it by as in kind put both in there I'm paying this and this is in kind so you would just have to explain why you've got two prices there one that you're paying and what the other one is yeah you would put that as in kind and we'll come to that we'll come to that in the um, budget section because there is a budget section that we'll go to so we've done this uh, partners I think it's really useful I think if you've got a partner in your application I think it, if you've got a theatre offering you space or offering you support or some brilliant dramaturg offering you support, then I think it makes you look brilliant and that people are taking you seriously. And it's a bit of a stamp of approval from other people, which I think goes down really well in Arts Council applications. So I would try and have a partner in the project if you can so we partner with lots of you know lots of people developing work so that when they can write their application they go we're in partnership with the queen's theater and the queen's theater we you know we are advise on marketing we give rehearsal space we give dramaturgical support we give performance space we might give you um do your print your scripts for you you know there are lots and lots of things that we, you know a, a building can do for you and then it helps because somebody's gone somebody else has gone this project is really good that we're going to run we're going to support it in what way we can and that is really helpful uh, it gives you a bit of a stamp of approval and they go okay somebody thinks this person is credible so we will think that they're credible as well so I would really try and have partners in your work if you if you can. Um, so moving forward, have you planned the timeline for your project? Think about the different stages involved in delivering your project from planning to delivery and evaluation, as well as how your start date might be affected by our decision turnaround times. So obviously you don't want your start date within the six weeks. I think if your start date is really close to the decision from the project grants, they're going to they're they're not going to look on it that favorably. To be honest, it's like unless you write in there that we're ready to go the moment we've put all of this planning in and we're all re we're really really ready to go the moment we get that answer, Rebecca. The other thing is just um, it takes a while for the money to actually come through. So I think mine took about 
uh, it said 15 working days and that's after you have to do a bit of jiggery pokery on Gruntium to put your bank details in and all that type of stuff as well. So um, just in terms of, so I had to sub our project, the cost of one of the things that we needed to buy because it wouldn't have arrived in time for our R&D next week if I'd have waited until two days ago when I actually got the funding. So just be mindful of logistics in terms of that and um, anything that you need to buy beforehand, you might want to just figure out the timelines of that as well so that you're not kind of out of pocket too much. It's really brilliant. Thanks, Rebecca. That's a great insight. Uh, how long, and it might even take longer than that as well. Yeah. So I put that and some. Great. Um, Mia, have you planned the timeline for your project? Absolutely not. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's good. I mean, they you're not expected to do all these. I mean, they, these are ways of going, all right, okay, I've got some work to do before yeah. I do <laughs> my act. They're making you answer these questions just to go, oh, shit, I need to do a little bit more work before I actually do this. Um, have you considered how COVID-19 will affect the delivery of your activities? So that will be part of, I mean, uh, um, that you have to take that into uh, obviously uh, a lot of serious consideration because if you're doing something that can't be, if, they, if you don't have an alternative way of doing it or if it's not made for this period of time, uh, with these restrictions then they're, they're pretty unlikely to fund it so if you're going we're going to do an in-person performance but we've also got um a plan b to do it as a live stream then you're going to be absolutely fine um or we're doing a participatory project with a group of young people but we have already worked out that we can do this on zoom if we can't do it in person you know it's just making sure that all of that is there also the COVID probably, you know, what the how you rehearse in a in a in a COVID secure way that you thought that through the provision for because we're allowed to rehearse at the moment. Rebecca's coming to the Queen's ne uh, on next week and is doing some yeah. rehearsal and she's really thought through how she's going to do that. Oh, and yeah. also, my, my risk assessment is yeah, exactly. Large. So yeah, and we, you know, and that's another good thing about having a partner because we you know somebody like the greens we're already doing we can ha i mean we haven't helped you on that you've been really brilliant at doing it yourself but we you know a partner who's already had to deal with all of that will be able to advise and we have been put down as advising people on their applications of how to operate a covid secure rehearsal room um great so that's a really important thing okay now where does it take us to do you have an application profile on our online application system. Um, so your application will be done, we'll go to Grantium. I'm gonna say yes, because we pro I think it will show me Grantium. Da, da, da. So you come here, Grantium. Rebecca, do you wanna talk about Grantium? Yeah, so Grant, this is Grantium, you're seeing it now. It is the Arts Council's um, uh, portal, I guess, for applications mm. for both DYCP and um, project grants. It can be quite difficult to navigate at first. Um, once you kind of find secret things sort of where they all live, it becomes a lot easier. But at first it does become quite difficult. And um, what definitely, no, I know Doug will advise you to do this as well, is um, get a PDF copy. Once you kind of get into Grantium, you set up your profile, you'll have to do an eligibility check for your project and that's basically similar to I guess the questions that you've done mm. so far you kind of just um it's about six questions I think it won't take you very long and after they've decided that it's eligible then you'll kind of unlock the next boss level which is the application form download it as a pdf and work offline because Grantium sometimes times out and um it's less stressful if you're working just in Google Docs or on Word or whatever you want. I do. I try and do as much as I can on paper because I get. Um, I'm not great with screen time. So, uh, yeah, definitely work out of Grantium and move into Grantium when you're ready to start. When you feel like you've finished the application and, and you're submitting the text into the boxes, but do check the character count 
because there are very strict character counts on um, almost all of the questions. And that can be disappointing if you're like ready to copy and paste and suddenly you're massively over. So um, yeah, definitely work offline, but keep, keep tabs of your character count. Brilliant. And you have to, um, it takes, you, you, you create your account and it takes a while for them to, conf to confirm it, don't they? To uh, authenticate the account. It's a long time since I authenticated it, but I think, yeah, it can be about five days. Maybe. Days, yeah. So make, don't leave it to the last moment. I would set it up like straight away. Yeah. So it's all well. done. And then you can tinker around it. And absolutely, you shouldn't write your application in Grantium because it's notorious for really buggering up and people losing their all their hard work. Um, this is this, which I'll send you the link to. This is from the organization Uncultured and they've done a document. I'm gonna put these all in the um, chat. I don't find, oh, it's cause I'm screen sharing, that's why. <laughs> chat, 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 where's the bloody chat? I'm just gonna put all these links in. I hope they'll come up all right. Yeah, yeah so okay. there they are. So um, one thing, yeah. So this is a Google Doc. So it's open to everyone and you can take it because I put some notes in there and you can, so grab these. There's a link to Let's Create. There's a link to the site that we we're just on, Project Grants. There's a link to uh, case studies. So these case studies are grants that have already been successful and they give you an idea about the projects and the kind of projects that they do and why they were successful, you know, what people were really looking at. So, and there are loads on there and they're really varied and they're rather brilliant. Um, and some of them might fit yours, might be similar to yours and are really kind of useful. Um, and then, um, this is the, oh, I'm not sure what that one is, sorry. This is the, this one here is a, a document that is made by Uncultured. They also do a, a develop, develop your creative practice. And basically they take all the questions and they just put it in a document here. So if you don't want, you can either get the PDF and download it or you can use this one here. Um, so these will be the questions that you will, this is a template, it's a direct copy and paste of all the information of Grantium. You cannot submit, submit this to ACE, but instead you use this as a place to write your answers and then copy and paste your answers into Grantium because like and Rebecca said, you wanna know what the word count is before you, the character count before you start putting it into Grantium because you don't really wanna edit it in Grantium, you wanna edit it in here. So this application is broken down into four main sections. So you've got quality, which is a weird one, which is really about how good your project is. <laughs> you know, if it's a really good project, that's what it is. If, and also if you've got the, you know, about you as an artist, if you are quality, because you have to write about yourself in this. Um, the, um, um, you know, quality, if the project really is going to deliver their strategy in the best way possible. It's also whether you, they think that um, this comes into the management, but if they think you are capable of delivering that project as well. Um, what they don't, what the Arts Council don't want to do is, and this is another way of thinking about the, uh, the, the application, they don't want to invest in money in a project that's not going to work or in somebody who's not gonna manage their project and it be a disaster. One of the things that we put into our budget was, obviously we, we were able to have the Queens as a partner so they could see that we would have their support. Um, but we also put in two sessions with um, a producer to mentor us through managing this R&D. Mm. Um, so we put into the budget two sessions with Toby Taramatang who's mentoring us and it was 
really really useful um I've already had one of those sessions just things that you you might not have thought of before like contracting I am suddenly hiring technically like four other people next week and I've never done a contract before so her just kind of walking me through and sending me some um examples of how on earth you write a contract to somebody really really useful and also it just kind of helped because I'd never this was my first application like I said before I'm not necessarily a safe bet in the same way as somebody who's had three or four applications go through. So just to show Arts Council, like I've got someone to help me if I suddenly have a brain fart and don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, to call on, you know, call on theatres or institutions or colleagues or other people, you know, uh, then probably people on the on this network as well. Mm -hmm. who have done projects you know someone like me you've worked with Mich Michelle Payne you know somebody who's had numerous Arts Council applications and numerous projects who've got the experience mm -hmm. call some favours in but also you can put some money in for them as well yeah yeah we budgeted for Toby's time yeah. and that was totally part of our process so and we explained it in the management section we sort of referenced that about you know we've got someone to kind of babysit us basically <laughs> not going to run off to Spain with the money <laughs> So yeah, public engagement is the really is really important, and often uh, people fail on the public engagement bit. But like you know, some of our artists already spoken. Amia, go on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I have lost. I don't. I've lost the sharing screen. I don't know how to get oh. it back. I can't see what you're sharing with me anymore. Can I, can everybody else share it? See it? Uh, I can see it. What can you see, Mia? I've just, at the moment, I've just got all of you down the side of my screen. I clicked oh, that's on- That's weird. Yeah, I've just, like, I've lost the whole screen. I've been trying to get it back for a couple of minutes. We've lost you as well. I'm here, sorry. Yeah, I'm- Do you want to go out and come back in? I think I have to do that. I'm so sorry. No, don't worry. Go out and come back in and I'll let you in and that might sort it. Okay. Um, let me try. It might be your connection. Maybe yeah, it's the amount of data. Zoom first. Just just click on Zoom somewhere, and it might just reactivate it. On Zoom somewhere. Yeah. I, it, that, the whole screen is lost. I've just got my. It's so weird. I would oh. I would close it down and come back in. Okay. And wow. leave the leave it, and then leave the call, and then come back out. And come it's back not even giving me the option. I don't know how to do that anymore. I've lost. Okay. I'm so sorry. Don't even know how to leave. Are you, are you on a computer? I force you to leave. Yeah, I'm on my Mac. Can you kick me out? Yeah, but if I kick you out, I might not. Can't you not... put her back in the waiting room? Oh, God. So put her in you... the waiting room. I'm putting you in the waiting room. And then you can invite her back in. It's like you've sent her for a time out to think about what she's done. Isn't that weird? <laughs> weird. It's weird. Are you, is that better? She's smiling. Um, uh, ask to unmute. Yeah, <laughs> kick you I'm out so and then get you back in. Thank <laughs> you for that, Sally. Public engagement obviously is about your audience or your participants. And, you know, you really want, I think obviously they want you to reach people that um, are underrepresented. Ultimately, if you're going to reach communities, areas of low, of, uh, low arts engagement, and, and, and that audience finder really helps you uh, uh, give you detail about how you can talk about those areas. So certainly, one thing um, you should know also, uh, for those who are in the London Borough of Havering, is the London Borough of Havering is the fourth, has the fourth lowest arts engagement in the whole of London. So you can put that in as a statement. There's, you can find those stats on the ACE website as well. So we quoted back to them their own statistics. Yeah. We said we wanted to do work it because Thorrock's the ninth lowest and Barking and Dagenham's the third lowest in the country, I think. Um, so it's just helpful. You can just Google those statistics and find them. It's just helpful. Also, Havering has the lowest arts, not anymore actually, it's probably gone up a bit because of the work we've been doing, um, is, has the lowest arts council applications in the whole of London, the borough. And London is really competitive. So if you can apply outside of London, it's a good idea. But if you happen to be uh, applying from Havering, 
then you it will be considered in a, in a different way because there are very few applications that come from Havering and it's the same for Thurrock and it's also the same for South End. So those places are really good places to be applying from. Um, if you get into inner London, it gets super, super, super competitive. It's, it's really great to be applying from areas, those areas where there are fewer applications from. But so, sorry, that's a bit of a tangent. Finance, obviously that you've really worked out the budget and, and, um, and priced it correctly. Because if you haven't worked it out, then equally they won't invest in that because it might be a bit of a disaster. And then the management, like Rebecca just touched on, they want to know how you're going to manage the project. And you'll be surprised at how skilled you might be, some experience that you have from other jobs. Mm. If you haven't ma managed a cultural project, you might have been a manager, you might have managed budgets in other businesses, or you've managed money in other businesses, you manage people in other, in other roles that you have done. They do apply and you should talk about that. It doesn't yeah. mean that um, it all has to be within a kind of cultural, uh, a kind of cultural lens. You might have skills that are from other, other roles or other jobs that you do. Um, Doug, I was, I was just gonna say another, uh good website for everyone um house house theater.org.uk they going back to what you were saying about you don't know how to write contracts or you were unsure about doing certain things so house theater is both for venues and artists so say you wanted to have like a template of how do you write a contract up for a stage manager it's got it all there for you or if you wanted to do like how to finance how to budget um stuff to do with how do you tour a show? How do you do the technical health and safety? So on there for both artists and venues, it breaks down absolutely everything you, for you. And it's a, it's a phenomenal resource for when having to ask questions that you think that you might be out of your depth. So that's, um, that, that's uh, so housetheatre.org.uk. So that's, a, I'll, I'll write in the chat, but that's really useful as an artist or as a, right when you're part of a theatre company, um, the amount of information that, that's there will cover the majority of things that you might be unsure about. That's brilliant, Danny. That's great. And they're quite, and they're really open for uh, chatting and communicating as well. So I think you can, you can contact, don't be frightened of contacting them as well. They've got a really great, brilliant, it's also really useful, Danny, for um, just all the venues in the Southeast, in the South and the East of England, isn't it? About, you know, if they're venues that you want to target for touring, because they're actively looking for for touring product that goes into those venues. And also as well, if you've got any place to have mental health, the Wellcome Trust, they've got like 250 million a year that they look to give out in grants and things like that. So if there's any part of your play that's got anything to do with mental health or the science, uh, or, or the sciences, um, the Wellcome Trust, invest a lot into the arts yeah that's a big part of money isn't it it's yeah if you're doing anything related to that definitely have a look at that at that funding stream and um, so let's move on so we go to these first few there is a whole um That's the case studies there. Sorry, I should have showed that to you. Uh, there is a whole uh, piece of guidance here, which is that last um, link, which is how to apply 15,000 and under. So this takes you through all of the questions as well. It is a little complicated, but after this, hopefully after this session, it might make a bit more sense. So do download that as well and have a little look through that. But it is a little bit impenetrable if you if you're coming to it for the for the to the for the very first time um so here is basic details so this is a little bit like that question about can you talk about your project in a sentence so we would like to know what your project is what will happen and who it is aimed at one of the most important things about these little prompts underneath Often artists don't answer these prompts. And I think that, you know, and this is not just for Arts Council applications. We, you know, we know it just um, from other, you know, big applications that we do at the Queens. 
is you have to answer those prompts. If you don't answer those prompts, they base, you know, they go through and they have, they have those prompts on a, on a list next to them as they read your applications and they tick whether you have fulfilled those, answered those prompts and fulfilled those parts of the questioning that they want you to answer. So do make sure that write it and then go, have I answered what that, what that is about. So this is a very short summary of your project. It's only 600 characters, it's absolutely tiny. Um, it's the nuts and bolts of the project in its kind of simplest terms. It's kind of the what, where, who, maybe some of the why, some of that comes a little bit later. But you really want to capture, one of the most important things about this application that you should know too, is all quite centralized. It goes to a kind of, uh, it's centralized in Manchester. There is a whole panel that reads these applications. It may not be somebody who knows theater that is reading your application. So you have to write it in a way that they will know and get excited about what it is you're writing about. So don't take it for granted that they'll know who you are, who you're talking about or what, you know, the content or what you're going to do is just make it really simple and incredibly clear. Um, uh, I, read the, I read an application recently where the, the uh, company who had, you know, pretty, you know, decent experience, but even then, and they were writing it as if the person know, knew who they were and you can't every time, you just have to take it right back to the, the basics. So I am going to share, um, I'm going to share, I feel like I'm turning into a 60 year old. <laughs> My screen is so tiny. <laughs> I need like, I need multiple screens. <laughs> and I've got glasses now as well. <laughs> so I'm like, this small. So um, the other day I said, I was on a Zoom meeting and I just, I said, sorry, is it possible please for you to share it on the Zoom? <laughs> the Zoom. <laughs> That doesn't even make sense. I just I don't know if I just shut down or if I'm getting old, but I was like, God, I sound like my mum. I love I love the Zoom. We should call we share it, it on the it. Zoom. On the Zoom. So this is for Rebecca. Right. We will, I think there was um you copy and paste this, I might have lost something there. We will R and D coven a gig theatre show about witches like amazing boom <laughs> we know the name we know what it is that it's exciting a gig theatre show about witches so we're going to R&D coven with creative associates we'll be doing organizational development in preparation for future national rural touring we are also developing a theatre music workshop for young women and non-binary people aged 14 to 19 from Thurrock and surrounding areas. So we've got the project, we've got something that it's about. Um, we know that she's going to work with new creative associates on it. Um, and then there's organisational, like within two sentences, we've got organisational development as well for the future. And we've got rural in there which is rural touring is pretty hot because it's under um, served uh, areas in terms of arts engagement. Um, and then immediately we've got this participatory thing as well, developing a theatre music workshop for young women and non-binary people. So uh, young women and non-binary is the, um, uh, is the equality, pr equality principles because um, our gender obviously is part of the protective characteristics and also um, LGBTQI also comes under um, those protective characteristics as well. Um, obviously young people are less engaged in theatre as well. So we know that statistically Thurrock, she's got Thurrock in there, which is the area of low arts engagement surrounding areas, which ACE list, boom, in there right in the beginning as having low arts engagement. We will tour this workshop nationally alongside 
alongside Coven in the long term, which is really great because this is R&D, but she's already talking about the long term public engagement, which is what you have to do. We will be working at the Queen's Theatre Horn Church, boom, partner, stamp of approval, music venue, Camden Chapel, boom, stamp of approval, and outdoors in rural Essex in order to see how the show behaves in the diverse spaces we want to inhabit. So uh, how long did it take you to write that, Rebecca? Oh, how, it took me probably 20 minutes to write it and about four days to narrow it down to 600 characters. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's a really good, good point. Write it, you know, really write what you need to write. Yeah. And then you have to find a way to keep all of those, all of those elements in. Um, so Sally, what do you, what, I mean, obviously I've just covered it, but what has she done in there? Well, it's a bit like the, the Ronsell advert, isn't it? It says what it does. It's yeah, just there. Yeah, exactly. It's so just there. It's just there. It's, and also, it's super simple and accessible. So you look at it, I instantly think, okay, so now I know what it's about, who it's for, where it's going to be, and the fact that it's got longevity, because it's not just about the now, it's going, she talks about the fact that it's going to run for longer. Yeah, absolutely. And the Arts Council want to invest in something that will have you know, hopefully we'll have a future life so that their investment goes much, much further. And that's the interesting thing about the organisational development as well as building partnerships is this investment hopefully will pay off with partners investing in the, in the, in the product, the, the production later on as well. So you do, you want to grab their, in, you know, it's a bit of storytelling. You want to grab them straight away. And it's not academic. It's really clear. It's very economic, the language. It's not, you know, it's great. Do you do your, I mean, the thing is with this is that this is the first thing that you have to, after you've filled out all your forms and ticked certain boxes, this is the first bit of answering questions that you have to do. And it can be difficult if you try to work through this in chronological order completely, mm. right? So I think I probably wrote something for this and then finished th the rest of the application. But the work that I had to do on my project plan, which is literally knowing what I'm going to do on what day, made me probably go back and change quite a lot of what you can see there. Because I can't stress to you how much creating a plan, like I've got here, I've got a list for the developing I'm going to apply for developing your creative practice and I've got in my notebook a kind of plan of what I'm going to do before I even get to the application because I know from my experience writing this one I feel like I spent so much time doing a whole draft that I didn't really know what I was doing and only when I got my plan together was I able to really speak specifically about what I'm going to do with who and where so the plan I think just give yourself some dreaming time. What would I do if I got this money? Allow yourself to fantasize about it. What do I want to do with this time? It's so difficult. We spend so much time thinking, I'm not going to get it. Do I dare do this? Is this worth all the time that I'm going to try and fit around, you know, my job, childcare, just living in a pandemic? But just sit down and just allow yourself to dream about what you would do with that time and money. And that will really help you to create your project plan and your budget and it feels more holistic than kind of sitting with an excel spreadsheet absolutely that's brilliant rebecca that's absolutely spot on and it's really tricky to tackle some of this stuff until yeah it's until you've got exactly what you want to do um and you can't like here amount requested i mean why is that at the beginning of the application <laughs> because there's no way you're gonna know when you uh, when you start if you're going to do it in chronological order, how much it's going to cost? Um, how much of this request is for your 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 collaborators' personal access costs? So these are access costs, you are um, extra money for particular access needs that might be uh, if you're uh, a deaf artist or a disabled artist or new, uh, neurological diversity, it's, you know, there are, you might need to build those access costs into your budget. And why they put them there is because those access costs are really expensive mm -hmm. um, and they will probably push the budget over 15,000 pounds. And so then they don't get included. If your personal access costs take your request over 15,000 pounds, 
we will still treat your application as an application for 15,000 and under and make a decision within six weeks. So that's why they want to know it's there. Next one is, do you or does your organization object receiving national lo lottery funding for religious reason reasons? Because obviously it's betting, that money has come from betting that some organizations don't, and then they can take money from a, a different from a different pot to make sure it hasn't come from your lottery our lottery tickets. Um, my grandma was so excited when she found out it was like she's like oh I knew I'd been doing the lottery for you all this time oh, that's great <laughs> that's, that's really sweet I know they don't know actually they, people need to know that actually don't they yeah. a bit more I think she just felt vindicated after like 90 years of doing the lottery <laughs> <laughs> uh, activity start date you might want to come back to that later activity date and now this is the interesting one I, was this on yours, Rebecca? The Let's I Create? Think, uh, yes, it was on there. I think I put everything because um, we're working with people in the community. So that's the first one. Uh, cultural communities, village towns, the project eventually will tour rurally. And then collaborative. Um, the show is a collaboration between myself and um, an artist from the music industry. So we're collaborating cross form. So I think I said that I was doing all of these. Yes. They, did, they still gave me the money. So. <laughs> no, yeah, don't worry about it. I think it's a tricky one because also they haven't really released all the detail on Let's Create. So yeah. um, I would say Creative People is, you know, in one example, Creative People is an Amdram society mm. making work. So it's where the people themselves are making the work where they're self-organizing to make the make to be creative and it might it might come from a social change organization as well mm -hmm. um cultural communities is really uh, where artists and communities are coming together to decide and create work um so cpp creative people in places having changing is definitely co cultural communities where the artists and and the people are level and often the people, are, the artists are enabling the people to, to curate the work and make the work. So Public Acts was probably uh, a cultural communities project as well, the, the project that we had at the Queen's, um, because it becomes about people led when the artists are guiding it. And then a creative and cultural country is really about the artists. That's about the artists doing their work and being innovative. And they want the artists to be innovative collaborative and because we've got brexit international <laughs> thinking about how we can sustain our international international work so if you're in doubt um i would just read that um it i mean exactly rebecca ticked them and she was fine they, you know she's not they didn't penalize her for for uh ticking all of them but and also it's a bit nebulous at the moment because they haven't quite said exactly what the detail in that um, strategy is. You can go to that re easy read access, the uh, easy read version of um, uh, Let's Create if you've got any questions or you can, uh, or you can ask me. So quality uh, is one of the four criteria. Tell us, this is where you unpack that summary what you want to do, how it will help you and your organizations. They've got a number of questions under this section and what you want to achieve by doing it. We also ask about other artists and practitioners who you may be working with, what their role is and why you have chosen to work with them. And make sure if you are working with our other artists, make sure you have chosen them and identified who they are before you write this application. Don't put, I'm gonna work with a movement director and not, not put who that movement director is. Um, Douglas, can I ask a question on that? Yeah. What happens if, so there's a director I've spoke to that would be interested in working on this project with me, but then what happens if you did get the funding and then for their work commitments, that has to change? You just change it, it's fine. Okay. Once, once they've committed, they're not gonna so not say you can't have that money because that director didn't, didn't um, okay. do the job. And also you get to put if it's uh, confirmed or I can't remember, 
like penciled I can't remember you yeah. get you get expected the expected, expected okay. yeah but I wouldn't worry about that too much I think it's better to have the people there and then if things change because things change we know in orange we're freelance you know you're freelancers yeah. things change all the time don't they um but make sure they are in place uh equally your partner's in place as well um when we look at your answers to these questions, we will think about how strong your idea is. So that's really important to talk about the art and how clearly you have expressed your aims. And, you know, and a lot of it's about, you know, why now? Why is this important to make it now? If you have demonstrated that your project is likely to achieve its ambition, if the project will strongly develop the work skills and the people organizations involved, they really want to know that if they invest in you as an artist and and the artists you're working with, that this project is going to develop them as well. Um, even though it's not part of de develop your creative practice, they want to see that everyone is developing through the projects that you are making. If, you, if you've demonstrated that you or the people you are working with have a track record in delivering good quality work, so I'll come on to it, you want to big yourself up. I mean, we don't do, we really don't like doing this, but you've got to sell yourself. And it's surprising what you will have done that you will be able to sell yourself. So don't shy away from, from doing that. Um, uh, the quality of the experience, the quality of the experience for the people taking part in the project and whether the artist organisations involved are high quality in the context you're working with. So they want to know it's going to be good. It's going to be a good piece of work and that people are experiencing a really it's something really brilliant is going to happen to them and they really want to know about that so tell us about your organization's relevant work and experience relevant is really important because it needs to be linked to obviously the project they want to know that you've got some experience to be able to deliver it show off sell yourself they want to know it'll be good name check commissions partnerships awards press quotes no matter how small they might they might seem so um mia what relevant it's your uh, tell us a little bit about the project you're doing we haven't heard a bit about your project um well my project is about showcasing performers puppets um music and stories from the afro-caribbean diaspora Great, um, brilliant. Yeah, and it, and it's in a, in a in a piece of work. You want to make? Is it an R and D project, or are you going to make? Yeah, something? so um, it's a, um, the first project that um, I want to make. Although I've got to, there's two ideas. Okay. I'm one that so um, one is um, um, it's called the instrumentals. They're both their children's stories, um, and um, one is about a a um, a young um, puppet. A young girl whose grandfather dies, and in the at his funeral, she goes down into the basement and discovers all of his instruments, um, and they all come to life. They're puppets, and they teach him, they teach her about her grandfather's life through the music that he played. Brilliant! Sounds amazing. So, and what role are you playing within that? Are you directing? Right and right. Well, yeah, devising. writer and directed devising. <laughs> So kind yeah. of collaboration. So what relevant experience do you have for this project? Um, I have um, worked with um, Goblin Theatre on two projects, um, uh, uh, working um, as a performer and um, collaborating. Well, they're the, the projects for young people? Yep. Yeah, brilliant. So you've worked on two projects with... A, with that was uh, just with Goblin. I've also worked with punch drunk on three projects i've worked with um uh, uh will tuck it um as, as i spent a year on a cbbc show um i feel like i've got enough yeah, that sounds amazing you have loads of experience it's really great yeah so you want to put that obviously and how many years as a performer um three years three but in your whole performance life yeah, I've only been in the industry for three oh, years. Brilliant, amazing. God, you've done loads in those three years as well. Yeah, I have. brilliant. <laughs> it's really, really great. Great. So that and um, so particularly around devising and making unusual work and work for young people and movement based on mu music. Yeah, really go into the detail of what your experience of working on those projects. 
Um, one one quick yeah. thing while we're here. So in terms of um, so one of the um, uh, one of the reasons for going for this as well was knowing that two people that I've worked with have gone for like similar grants about working with getting like young um, black performers um, to learn puppetry skills and to develop black puppets. Yeah, and um, I'm talking to both of those people, but they're not going to be in the room. They're more as mentors to me. Do I still right. put them down in the quality? That's still, even though they're not in the room with me. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you should put that in your, um, more about your project. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's just about your experience. Okay. And then you go on to your partners and th that comes in other, in other sections. Yeah, so you just need to really uh, show that you're, you've got enough experience to be able to deliver this project. And within, okay. the, within young people devising, innovating, you know, you're, you're making a new form of theatre, but you've worked with lots of really amazing people who do that. Okay. Um, so that's really great. And then tell us more about your project and what you want it to achieve. So you are, this is where you really unpack the summary and you go into all of the detail. So who's involved, the partners, the art, the ideas. So what, here are the prompts here. We want to know what you aim to do and why, including the ideas behind your project. So I'm gonna bring up, um, I'm gonna bring up yours, Rebecca, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So if we go back, we are going over eight o'clock. Is that all right for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one's going out. Um, so here's, I'm just gonna go for your relevant experience, Rebecca Brewers. And, and this is all quite new for you as well, Rebecca, wasn't it? This, you know, making, moving from an, as an actor into a leading on a project. Yeah, definitely. So um, that's, go on. No, no, that's that's it. That's all I was going to say. So, so in terms of experience, you've never met. You've made but smaller projects, like, you know, that have those skills, but never a project of this scale. Is that right? I have been a um, like a mem you know, a, a, an actor and a co-divisor in a room, but I've never led on a project. Yeah. Um, that was my kind of brainchild. No. So that's really good, Mia. That might be useful for you. Rebecca Brewer is an actress, theatre maker and facilitator, to, facilitator from Derbyshire, now living in Essex. Um, we've, uh, we've taken out some personal information and stuff, so. And the, so. End, the end thing is a commission that I suddenly realised hadn't been announced yet, so I was like. Yeah, oh, now I'm intrigued, <laughs> I really want to know. Rebecca co-runs the Leading Edge Arts Project, a programme where young people around the UK collaborate with professional artists to make work together. So it's really great, particularly around the workshops that you want to develop. Rebecca is an associate artist of the Queen's Theatre Hornchurch and a founding member of the Working Class Artist Group, um, which is, shows a kind of intent around the kind of work that Rebecca wants to make and is important uh, for her. Uh, Rebecca will be working with Coven with Coven co-writer Daisy Shute, an award-winning singer, multi-instrumentalist, songwriter and arranger who is re represented by Talent Bank Live Agency. As well as touring and recording as an artist, Daisy works on film, TV, game soundtracks and band albums as a session singer, arranger and booking agent. Daisy leads youth music workshops and teaches music privately and co-runs the all-female Heard collective supporting and promoting women in the arts. So that's really great because obviously the project, uh, Rebecca's project is very women, uh, female led, female focused. Um, we have been working together since 2017. So it's not a new relationship. We know that that relationship has been building and they work together well, writing and composing pieces such as The Missing Weeks, Audio Theatre for Podcasts, and Cam Girls, a visual EP for online in the, in the commission. Our work has been described as ah, lovely, a little quote in there. Little quotes are really great. A quotes that are about uh, statistics or quotes that support. Um, the current of public engagement and why this project is really, really important. Now, or this quotes quote, about your, go on. The, I was just gonna say, this quote isn't from a review. This is from, Emily watched um, a live stream R&D of the show that we did in August. And this was in an email that she wrote to me. And I said to her, 
could it, could we possibly I think Doug was like you need to include some quotes and I was like but we've like no one's really reviewed anything we've done and so I said to her could I possibly use this as part of my thing and she said yes so don't I mean this is what she said it's in an email I've not made it up but it's not from an official kind of review so these things can be um they don't have to be kind of you know out there in, in broadsheet newspapers these quotes great um, and then about the project. So remember the summary, this is where Rebecca unpacks it. So Coven is a gig that's show about witch trials. It see, seeks to dismantle continued prejudices. So continued, so we're taking something historical, continued prejudice, prejudice, prejudices against working class rural women by analyzing historical stories of our own family histories woven together with music. This is really brilliant. So she's saying why she's doing it now what its purpose is. Coven's themes of fake news violence against women and class inequality is still relevant today. In 2020, calls to UK domestic violence helplines were up 80% and the disproportion. You see how she's using an Apazan, so she's getting her work count, her uh, character and count done. You'll yeah. never write the word and again in your life. <laughs> just sort yourself out and do it from the beginning. Just don't write yeah. and. <laughs> And the dispro disproportionate impact of COVID on low, coming, uh, low income families is well documented with 16% of the creative sector identifying as working class and working um, women making up to less than 20% of songwriters, our industry lacks vital representation. So there you are. There's a really great reason for making this project really. And, and it's good to do some digging around for those kind of statistics. Um, for this R&D, we'll continue to develop the music script and work. And so this is what she's going to do. Develop the script, music script, and work with specialists in shadow puppetry, movement, and sound healing and magic. We'll explore the co-creation of a spell with, with the audience. So that is what she's going to do in that R&D. We'll do sharings at a theatre, at a gig venue. We'll also explore the challenges of working outside, uh, outdoors. So that's, and you don't have much room to write about the project. These used to be much longer and because they cut the administration of the Arts Council in half, the Arts Council had to cut its own funding by 50%. All of these things have become really, really economic and not very much room. But I think it's a useful thing to write about your project in so few mm -hmm. uh, characters. Um, with organisational development, we will create filmed content, a tour pack, and restart, forge new relationships with, that's good about the restart because of COVID, yeah, that's a really compelling argument, forge new relationships with venues, we'll have meetings, network, and use existing relationships to broker new partnerships. This will enable us to secure a future 10 plus date tour to theatres, pubs, festivals, forests, village halls, and more, reaching non-traditional audiences, yeah, nationally. Um, it will test out a music devising workshop for young women and non-binary people aged 14 to 19 for Thurrock and Buckingham Dagenham, which rank ninth and third for areas with lowest arts engagement, according to ACE. Once tested, this workshop will tour nationally alongside the show. At the end of this period, we'll have a rehearsal-ready audience-tested show, a tested education workshop, film content, a tour pack, and new strength from relationships with venues. Oven ready! Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got all the elements there haven't we we've got the idea why it's important now and then all who it's for and then the stages of it and where yeah. it's going to happen go on stats are really useful because you know I kept writing things like um oh, yeah I'd write like quite a waffly thing about how there aren't many um working class women working in the arts and how COVID's going to make that even worse and and then Daisy who I was working with and who would um come into sessions and and help me with what I'd written and collaborate on it as well would be like but like prove it and it's quite good to be able to prove your statistics because when you and we found certain things in there that were just like that explains to people much more than just me saying it like if you can show studies um you know, especially if you're working with young people, there's a really good study that the Prince's Trust has just done around mental health. It's, it's, it's terrible, it's shocking the statistics that have come out. But if you're wanting to make projects that are sort of beneficial to the mental health of young people, that might be somewhere to look. But it's, it, yeah, just Google what you're trying to find a stat for mm. and you're likely to be able to 
to find the thing to show what you know to be true from your personal experience. Yeah, and it shows, and there's a, it comes across there's a passion in there. It's a real drive and a passion from that from um, that little breather. And then just going up, has she answered the prompts? What you aim to do? Why? The ideas behind it, your project? Yeah, that's all pretty much covered. Um, Great, I'm gonna whiz through. Tell us how this project will help you help to develop your work. So this idea of investing in the development of artists. I think, uh, yeah, I, Rebecca, have an established career as a performer, but an, uh, but an emerging one as a career. So I think this is quite useful for a few people in the projects that they're making. An emerging one as a creative, Coven is a full-scale step change. Step change is always a really great word to use in creating my own work and will act as a springboard for future work. So it's really brilliant. If we invest in her, then she will go on to achieve um, a, a greater uh, uh, independence in, in terms of her creativity. Uh, I discovered through research for Coven that my ancestors were probably accused witches. This discovery forms part of the show and is the first time I have written autobiographically yeah that's great yeah and actually it's interesting because that could have been in the ideas section but actually it works really well here because it's about the opportunity to write or to write and write autobiographically mm -hmm. um over the last three years i've started to make work where i live i collaborated with people in my allotment to make a film and have worked with students. The music theatre workshop for young women and non-binary people is an opportunity to work further with young people in my local area and strengthen my connections and the Essex-based artists. A very grassroots, so it's a really grassroots project. She's using all of her contacts actually as well. So yeah. if you want, you know, if you are teaching, if you are, I mean, why aren't you delivering, why aren't you taking the work to them and delivering work with them? If you, you know, I, I certainly when I was running a company, even running the theatre actually, I go, who do I know? What are my contacts? How can I use them to really make sure that this project has a, the biggest impact that it can possibly have? So think of your network and how you can use them to create a really, really brilliant, really brilliant project that's going to have quite a wide impact, not just in making a show, but also and I don't think, Rebecca, you were doing that because you wanted to tick boxes around participation. That... No, it's um, the workshop is a really important part. It's it's like it travels like a train track with the show is the idea because we we want to make um, future covens, you know, and kind of like work for the future. And especially the um, workshop is about collaborations between music and devising. And there's some pretty rubbish statistics um, around people from low socioeconomic backgrounds and being able to play instruments, which made a lot of sense about why I can't play any instruments. Um, and so that was a really useful thing to go, okay, you know, our dream situation would be we'd turn up with all of our loop pedals and all of our instruments and just be like, all right, so who wants to make a thing? Let's make a thing. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not a, a tag on at all and um and i think in one i think your project should go beyond you know if it's just if it's a show i think it should you should always be thinking about how it can how it can go out absolutely so. and it, yeah especially because we're wanting to tour rurally you know if you're going to a village hall and there's no local theatre what are you going to do in the daytime if you're taking up that public space which belongs to the people of that local community you may as well do something else in the daytime as well to kind of like um it's like a party bag isn't it it's like something extra special yeah it is yeah i love that um uh collaborating with daisy an artist from the music industry has revealed skills i didn't know i had she's talking about her skill set this next phase will deepen this learning and develop not only my creative practice and industry links but will develop coven as a piece and ensure it's finished and ready to tour this coven is a typical in its form and content so being innovative there's innovation in there we've decided not to have a traditional director but instead to work in a new way with a series of collaborative creative artists so yeah Brilliant, that's great. So the artists themselves being empowered 
and holding the whole of the project creatively. We plan to R&D cover with creative associates in summer 2020, but due to the suspension of project grants, we did not have the budget to pay ourselves or collaborators. Receiving funding will mean we can pay ourselves to work, really important on it full time and involve the other creatives to develop, govern. They want you to pay, they want freelancers to be paid at the moment. So that's a really great statement. The organizational development time will help us to develop new relationships with venues and producers through emails, meetings and calls, as well as the creation of our full tool pack. So she's really said, what you should think about in that, um, in that question is where where are you now and where will you be at the end of that project at the end of the project how will you be different as an artist and what is that journey because that's also part of the project as well you want to be a different you want to be a different artist by the end of it so when you're dreaming up the project have you got all those things in place that you can really go on this extraordinary journey and then um to, uh, you, uh, build uh, the opportunities to make work beyond it so which is the legacy they want to have they want to invest in artist development they want to invest in legacy and opportunity artists creating opportunities for themselves beyond and if that project leads to other opportunities then they're more likely to invest in it um project for what will your project focus on if your application is successful, so this is a bit of a tick box thing as well. You choose which one you're, which, um, at what your application will focus on in terms of the uh, aspects, because um, the more of these you tick, the better. You working with new people, Rebecca's working with new people, you creating and commissioning new work, they love you to create and commission new work reaching new and different audiences, boom, Rebecca's covered all of those, trying out new approaches, boom, undertaking organizational development, boom, undertaking professional development. <laughs> they're all in there and they're all brilliant. They're all really great. And you know, the more, and you don't have to hit all of those things, um, but I think lots of projects probably will. And the thing with the organizational development, it sounds really technical, but that, organizational development is the stuff that you're all doing anyway it's how you ended up getting on the um email list to be part of outer limits it's it's it sounds and, and also i don't have an organization i'm just myself and we're doing a collaboration so but i can still say you know we are doing organizational development even though i'm not part of an organization so it just helps you to um define but also pay yourself because we have two weeks of r and d paid as artists, and then we have a week of organizational development. So you're finally able to pay yourself for the time that you spend sitting down, writing emails, touching base with people and promoting your project, which is all of the stuff that, that I personally find you, you always end up doing for free. So do it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to make them the most of that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And how, how what's the, how it will help you uh, uh, create a, a, a another part of the journey beyond. Um, if your project involves working with additional artists, creatives and museum specialists, list them and tell us a bit about them using the tool below. You can include up to 10. You don't need to include yourself. If you're working with anyone who's helping you to deliver or manage your project, please tell us about them later in a separate partner section. Um, so this is where you add their name, role in the project, whether they're confirmed or expected, Chris, Chris, Chrissy, what will they be doing? Be really clear what they are doing as part of, of part of it. And, and what Rebecca has already really brilliantly done is she's mentioned them, not by name, or well, one of them she's mentioned by name, but she's mentioned them already. And you should have mentioned them already in the project, the, the description of the project. It's suddenly a bit weird if you suddenly got people in there and you go, well, they're not. I, I don't know why they're there because they haven't been spoken about in the main uh, body of the project. Don't just put people there because it looks a bit fancy. They, we need to know exactly what they're doing. This section is also really helpful in terms of your word count because this, what will they be doing? Mm. You get quite a lot of character count for this. So where you want to big up your team, um, if you've got an amazing team that have confirmed that they'll do your project with you here is where you can list all of their amazing achievements and also 
talk about what they're doing and why. So this is where we manage to explain why do we want a magic consultant? Why do we want someone to come and do shadow puppetry? What is that gonna to add to our project? So you can kind of steal, because it's so difficult with the um, word count, it's so small you can kind of steal from other sections if you find your over and put it in here when you're talking about specific people. So use the opportunity that this section provides. I found it really helpful, this bit. That's a great tip. That's a brilliant tip. Um, right, this is the tricky one. Public engagement is one of our four criteria. So we've done all the quality. Public engagement is one of our four criteria. In this section, we want you to tell us who your project is aimed at is really important, how they will experience and engage with it and how you're going to make sure your project reaches people. So that's really that question that was in that early quiz, wasn't it? Please read the public engagement section on how to apply guidance to help on how to answer these questions. When we look at your answers to these questions, we will think about how strong the case for public engagement with the activity is. Because you could just make something, and if you haven't really thought about who you're, who it's aimed at, and there isn't really good marketing plan, you could just they can invest in it, and nobody would see it. And that's a you know that's quite a waste of money when their whole strategy is about reaching the taxpayer um, and particularly those who don't normally get that opportunity to experience culture. Um, if the target audiences for the activity are clearly identified and that's um, going back to Danny and about the audience finder that's a really really brilliant tool to identify who your audience is. If the if the activity you know certain pieces might have really target audiences um you know and some of these projects already we've got young people probably got in me are probably young black people because of the subject matter we've got um people from essex uh, we've got Anne's story is very uh, female black female essex so that's a that clearly is a, an amazing target audience. It shouldn't be the only audience, of course, but because the subject matter might lend itself really strongly to particular uh, audience groups. Um, if the activity increases opportunities for people who don't currently get involved in the arts, they are in culture who are involved in a little in arts and cultural activity. If the activity increases opportunities for people already engaged in arts activity, if plans to market the activity to audiences, participants are well-defined and likely to achieve your aims. So that's your marketing plan. If there is no immediate opportunity to involve people, so research and development, where there is potential, uh, you need to write where there is potential for the public to get involved in the future, which Rebecca has done, and where relevant, whether access and diversity has been considered effectively. So here, this is a really important definition. It can be quite confusing sometimes, but audience, we mean people who are going to experience your project as viewers, listeners or readers, but who are not actively involved in the project. By participants, we mean people who are actively involved in your project, other than the artists and the others leading the project by devising, creating, making, presenting or performing. And so in Rebecca's, the participants are um, the, uh, young, uh, the young women and non-binary participants for, in her workshops. That's, that's the participants. But you might have participants who are actually creating the work with you who, as well, who are not. So for example, um, NT Public Act, the big, the big community musical at the Queen's had 130 participants in it. And then there was an audience watching it. So we would write about, I, you know, we would write about the, the audience and then also the participants. But obviously in that project, the, the main focus is the participants and not the audience. Um, Take care if your, act, if your activity is specifically aimed at any particular age group and they give you a list of ages. Take care if your activity is specifically, loads of, you know, there are loads of boxes to tick here. Take care if your activity is particularly aimed at any identified ethnic groups and it will give you a list of ethnic groups. Take care if your activity is specifically aimed at disabled people, so that gives you the option to tick there. Take care of your activities specifically aimed at individuals or groups with a particular sexual orientation identity. 
um, tick here if your activity is specifically aimed at either female, uh, male, female, or trans people. Um, again, the, read the guidance. So, you know, hopefully after this session, it will be easier to read that, that guidance. Who will engage with your project? You can use that. not many characters, um, a thousand characters to answer this. I put this is, this is very important. Often uh, artists are not, because this is one of the most difficult things really to think quite specifically on who your audience or your participants are. Um, like I said, that there might be a really specific audience specific to the intent of the project or the content of the project. Um, you might want to look at the reference to the let's create strategy if you really want to. Um, obviously under underserved and represented audience, so it's, you don't have to do underserved or represented audience, but obviously it, make, it does make your um, application stronger. And obviously if, you're, if, you're, if your project is targeted at or it you know, serves um, diverse audience or diverse participants. And you know that around diversity, this is obviously the, uh, um, is influenced by uh, the um, diversity law, but um, the, the protection against, um, oh God, what's the protection against? Uh, oh God, my brain is drying up. Like homophobia, uh, misogyny, um, against when somebody does something horrible to you. What is? <laughs> uh, sorry, sexism and homophobia and what is it? What's the word? Xenophobe. No, no, it's xenophobe. Racism and what is it called? Dis dis discrimination. Discrimination. <laughs> oh my God, we got this. <laughs> Um, and that is gender legally under the law. Uh, the protection against discrimination is gender, disability, class, race, age. Age is really important in there. Gender, reassignment, sexuality, pregnancy and maternity, and religion or belief. Um, and yeah, sexuality is in there. So hence why they are some of those questions, well, uh, ask questions. They're, they're pretty much covered in some of those boxes there. So. And you can still have, you know, you can still like in, you can say a gen, a theatre going audience. There's nothing wrong with going that I will, it will engage with a theatre going audience. So you've got your core audience, but then you want to go, but also it's going to do this, 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 and this, you know, because when we write about the programme at the Queen's Theatre, it's a theatre going audience. And then audience development for these particular identified groups that we want. So for example, the Greens Theatre, we have uh, one of our strategic objectives is around programming work for British South Asian audiences, because we don't, we, historically, we didn't have British South Asian audiences. So we really, really targeted particular, uh, particular groups and obviously um, young audiences uh, culturally diverse audiences. So you, um, who will engage with your project? So if we have a look at Rebecca's... One of the things on this, I found this one quite hard um, because at first you think, well, I want everyone to like my project. Yeah. But um, if you think to yourself, uh, who might see themselves in my, in my project, mm -hmm. that might be an easier way to tap into it because... Um, and then you can span out from there because probably the answer to that might be quite large. But um, but yeah, that might be a, a good way of getting into that one. I don't think you've I've got yours here. Oh, really? No. Oh. I might, might have missed, but don't worry. That's absolutely fine. Sorry. Okay. Might have been in the PDF when I tried to merge the different... Don't worry. Chrissy, who would your audience be? Who would engage with your project? Um, so if I think about what Rebecca said about who I, I mm. see in it, um, my project is, um, about, it's, it's semi-autobiographical and it's about brain damage. So people that, um, live with disability or have family members with disability. Um, so I kind of have this, I kind of have this vision that anyone that has, uh, 
and who's that embarrassing family member so anyone that has shame attached to their family um and then I was thinking as well about I think it's like 60 percent of young offenders um have some sort of brain injury so I was looking at maybe targeting um like young offenders as well um because I have some experience with with that so um and then I guess a theatre going audience as well and people from Essex. Yeah, great, brilliant. Well, there's loads there. So general theatre audience, um, you've got really specific targeted um, uh, engagement there, but quite possibly non-theatre going audiences. It's ge geographically specific. Um, so there's loads of content in there. Um, It'd be interesting then how you kind of translate that into how will you engage, how how, um, how you will reach them. Um, uh, Mia, how about yours? You've got your yours is young people, isn't it? Young audience. Yes. Who who else will engage with your project? Um, well, um, again, a theatre going audience because as much as it's focusing black stories, it's for everyone. For yeah, great. To learn. Yeah. Um, um, and I'm hoping schools for teachers to engage and. Yeah. Yeah. But the most, the thing that you will want to talk about is black audiences. Yeah. Because, and also it would be useful to dig out a statistic about um, theatre going in the black community. And if you can, and it depends where you want to do it as well. But that will, that's, that is, that will excite the Arts Council because it is a, it is a, 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 a group where there is low attendance at the theatre. Okay. So you want, but still keep it as everyone. Absolutely, you know, you want you want the metro cultural buffs to be able, you know, to come to the work as well. You know, there will be a, there will be a, a, an audience segmentation that is going to absolutely, and you, you could target them, and they may be engaging in, in they may be culturally engaged already. You want them because it's going to bump bump up your income. But also look at like Rebecca said is you know who does it re who's reflected in the work you want them if there's any opportunity to get new audiences in hurrah that is brilliant for us isn't it because that sustains the future of theatre if we get new audiences in if we just play to one audience segmentation again and again and again that the you know we won't regenerate that new audience so um, yeah. and it makes financial sense to reach as many people as possible as well. If you're naming schools as well, like I named two specific schools that I've worked in, um, it's just really handy because they can see, and, and it, it might not even be schools that you've worked in, it might be just schools that like a family, if you've got like an in with a school which houses lots of children, they just know that you'll be able to um, uh, put your project in front of lots of children. So it's Again, using your network isn't it? yeah absolutely always using your network um, and that will come up in the marketing plan again as well with that Rebecca was talking about actually face-to-face -face communication how will people engage with your project and what experience do you want them to have so we were talking a, a little bit like about this earlier on is Sally your project they were gonna in a non-traditional theatre they were going to buy radio um, that's the way, I mean, it, it, you know, it depends on the piece in, in Rebecca's in her workshops, they're going to participate in, and she'll talk about what the, what the project is. Um, here you talk about how they're going to, you know, what happens to them when they um, uh, take part or watch or participate in your project. And, but, and here, the brilliant thing is, is you get to write about what experience do you want them to have? So it's like really juicy, delicious stuff is you know how are they going to be changed what's going to happen to them where do you want them to be at the end end of the end of the project so uh, after they've experienced that piece of art where are they going to be will they have changed their perception or something or will they see themselves reflected like rebecca was saying will they see their story heard you know uh, uh, reflected for the first time outside of their own experience Will they have learned something new? Will it have changed, hopefully changed perceptions around the preconceptions of what it means to be from Essex or, you know, that's all the juicy, you know, that's why it's happening, isn't it? Which is really about why. 
I think we've some practical stuff in here as well. Like literally after the workshop, they might meet, you know, a person in our workshop might meet another person from their local area, but that doesn't go to the same school as them, but that they mm. like to collaborate and they've made a new friend that's got the yeah, same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a yeah. really practical um, uh, thing that could happen. So meet it, uh, connecting people that have got similar interests might be more beneficial than just sort of them coming in the first place, you know? Yeah. And which goes back to Harry's point about well-being and what creates well-being, um, that they might look, you know, look at an instrument in a completely different way and start to take up playing an instrument. You know, you can put all of those things. If what actively is it is it going to do um, to them? Uh, what you know, what what are the consequences of it? That's the that's a really exciting thing. Um, this is the hard thing. Tell us how you will make sure your project reaches people. We want to know how you make you will make sure that the people. So these people that you've spoken about up here. How are you going to make sure that they come? <laughs> mm. And already Rebecca's spoken about that really grassroots thing, which I think is brilliant. Your own network, I think, is always really brilliant as well. So this is your marketing plan. So the obviously the obvious one, social media. If you've got a social media account, how you know you can put numbers in there as well. Or if you know somebody, if you know somebody's got loads of followers, we're going to have support from X Y who has sixty thousand followers. Email, post, videos, press, local press, national press, local radio station, hospital radio grassroots, your neighbor, uh, flyering in the, on the high street, flyering outside of a place where your audience goes, meet them afterwards. Yeah. So after a football game, or if your player's about football, <laughs> do you know, or... Yeah, yeah, all... we, said, we said that we were gonna go into pubs and talk to people, which yeah. I wish we could have done. Oh, I'd give anything to go to a pub, <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, so. Um, there might be social change organizations that are connected with your subject matter. So for example, you might have, um, there might be a group, Christi, uh, uh, Chrissy, who is who supports um, ex-offenders or offenders. I've looked but, at Headway that deals with like amazing. family with brain damage. Oh, there you are, well, brilliant. Maybe I can engage there. Get them. Yeah, get them to promote it. You use use their networks. Yeah, so non traditional non theatre networks are really really useful. Um, schools oh, again are really really useful. Um, so I was just you, I've used um, Facebook on. Pixel before, um, and you can yeah. actually target. Obviously, you know, away from the politics of Facebook and things like that, but actually as a platform for advertisement, um, you can put in any specific words and you know any sort of links of which people you, you want people to click on and for you can set the target so for like three pound a day I was reaching 200 people with an advertisement of which you create and if you think for example like 250 flyers the cost of like the print and things like that you'll you'll save yourself more money uh, in the long term using pixel and building up your demographic from what you've learned from like your marketing pack or who you think your audience are and then by putting all that information into facebook pixel it then gives you um all that feedback and then you can actually show who you've reached who um connects on your website who looks at it what time they look at it so then you can then choose when you want to advertise to those people so say um, most people are going to look at your advertisement at 6 p.m. You can actually do it where you then boost your advertisement at 6 p.m. And again, you can do that for like three quid a day. And I think I did that for one of the shows that we did in the woods. And we went out every day to the woods and made a very short, it, it, was, a, it was a ghost thing. And we made a very short ghostly event and put that on at that particular time when most people logged on to Facebook to see the advert and it really boosted it. And it, we, we found that the more actual engagement that you put, so rather than it being just a 
flat advert the fact that you updated it every day so it was like almost like a blog we got loads of audience to come they and, and they really engaged it and they really liked that whole thing they thought they were very much a part of what was coming on that's a brilliant idea so yeah i mean be as you know as inventive as you possibly can i mean traditional obviously then there's traditional print through through your partners so if your partner's like the queen's theater obviously you can use their marketing department in their um their uh social media channels and email lists I, go on sorry to interrupt you i beg your, beg your pardon but i was also um uh, depending obviously on what age range you want to um, get in touch with, I've found that uh, places like, <laughs> it seems a bit weird, but places like the WI and U3A, because they're all now um, Zooming on Zoom, because obviously they can't get together, uh, they are, they're really desperately hungry for contact with people and so they, they and, and the U3A I do loads of talks to the U3As and they're I mean there are hundreds of U3As and hundreds of thousands of people who go to them and they love the whole idea of new things and I think sometimes we get a bit put off by the fact that they're older so you think they wouldn't be interested but they're really interested in things like Chrissy that you're talking about they'd be really interested in that and I think that if you if you make contact with the U3As and you put out like a little they would run that for you on a short video advert then I'm sure that you would get audience or you could even stream it into them uh, I, I sometimes stream stuff into their their meetings. Brilliant those these fantastic ideas um, if you know somebody's high profile, um, in person to particular groups, obviously ambassador, ambassador events, if you want to approach a particular group and then invite them in for a cup of tea, somewhere for a cup of tea, which we do these at the theatre quite a lot, as you bring them in and talk, you give them a chance to talk about, a chance to talk about the project with them and engage with them, particularly if it's a participatory session, uh, word of mouth, existing mailing lists. Um, so that's a tough one, but just e l any idea, just list tons and tons and tons of, of ideas, no matter how small they are, just they want to know that you're really, really thinking about how you can reach, because quite often people go, oh, it's for this group of people, and then this marketing plan is really not great, and then it will fail because they've gone. Well, I, you uh, you haven't proved how you're going to actually get yourself an audience or participants for that. So it's some really great um, creativity around how you can reach people, and also talk to part your if you've got partners, talk to them about how their experience of reaching particular audiences. These are the beneficiaries. How many people will engage with your project? So how many artists, creatives you put there? How many participants in there? Audience live um, and audience broadcast. I thought this can be big. I mean, it can, because if you've got somebody engaging with a, a little video that you've put on Twitter, or if you're on BBC Essex for a little chat, on BBC Radio Essex, the listenership at that point is probably like when you know, I don't know what it is, it's some big figure, uh, you know, it's about 30,000. So that broadcast online, even if it's an interview or a little video that you've done or a Q&A, &A, an online Q&A, or um, so imagine what that, what that number is going to be. Um, I haven't spoken about Q&As actually. You might want a Q&A or a forum around crit or an online discussion around your work. That's also another really brilliant way of engaging people and also getting feedback and evaluation. So you might want to put that in as part of your project um, uh, detail. Finances, um, obviously tricky if you don't know what the project is just yet, but as we've said, don't under estimate what you need. I would always put a few extra things in there actually, so that you, it gives, you can have your contingency. Definitely at the moment, 10% is a really brilliant figure that Rebecca had in hers. Um, I would put an extra couple of things in there. 
Um, your budget has to balance, so your income needs to be the same as your expenditure. We need to be able to see how you have worked your figures out. So if you're buying a camera, do some research, find the best price. If you're employing an actor, go to the independent uh, theatre council rates of pay or the UK theatre, it'll be an independent theatre council rates of pay, but they also have the rates of pay for writers, they have the right rates of pay for stage managers, so you can work it all out from that. And that should be the figure that you should be going through is the standard amount that uh, you pay. If you're paying yourself as a creative fee, you can make that up. I always think like five hundred pounds is probably is a really good is a really good number. Yeah, if you're not go on. That's what we did. That's what yeah. we did. You can make and, if, and you can argue it's a company rate because obviously if you've got someone like Daisy who's on an MU rate, musician the union is so fantastic they their rates are much higher. But you could go. We have decided we wanted a company rate for everybody working on the project, which is five hundred pounds. And then that's a really good argument as well. With your budget, another thing is obviously if you're having, if you are running a workshop, um, we included a travel bursary for participants for the workshop so that if somebody wouldn't be able to afford the bus fare or the train fare, we can give them that money. So um, think about the things that might get in the way of the people who you would like to have experience your workshop, yeah. what might get in their way and then try and fix it for them. BSL interpreter as well just whatever it is, you know, um, that might stop someone from being able to participate, you, you can fix it for them in advance. Yeah, somebody's going to do the closed captions on your yeah. digital piece. Um, we, on if you're doing a really big participatory community-based project, lunch. Yeah. Lunch for the participants should be in there. Or a tea break with biscuits, you know, all of that. That's a really important part of particularly participatory projects. And definitely the transport. I think that's a really great thing. Um, so, yeah, whether um, budget should be the total, should be for the total cost of the project. You're, you can't put down for things you've already done. That's a really important thing. You can't retrospectively pay for things that have already happened. Whether the budget is appropriate for the activity that is planned, for example, is the amount of money being asked for suitable for the scale of the type of activity and how appropriate are the areas of income and spending. Don't put that, don't let that put you off from actually just asking for what you need. It's what you need. Whether all items of the budget are relevant and reasonable, for example, fees or wages appropriate to the context and have quotes or for assets being appropriately researched for any assets and whether the application demonstrates that the activity is attracting income from other sources. Is any other income confirmed? If not, do potential income sources seem realistic? So don't put, we're going to get funding, but we don't know who we're going to apply to yet, but we're going to get it. That's really unrealistic. Um, and also we've put in five applications to all of these funds. Don't put they're all going to come through because it's pretty unlikely. <laughs> Um, and then you will really bug yourself up. It's a bit, um, you want to, if you are applying for funding, try and secure that before you do the application. And to all of your cash income on this page, as well as any support in kind you will receive. Just to say my income for this was zero because, and, and my application was accepted. So don't feel like you need to have financial income, support in kind yeah. was enough to get my application through. And when we and and if you're touring or making a show, to be realistic about what you think the percentage is. Have a look at if you're in that theatre that you're going to have a look what the average percentage of audiences. Be realistic. And if it's tw if it's a three hundred seater and it only gets fifty people, just put fifty people. And then you work out the income from that. Don't because you have to go back and you have to give all the figures for all of this all of this work. Um, so in kind, we've spoken about that. So if you've got, you can have so many different types of in kind, but make sure there is a monetary value on that in your, because that will really boost your support. Don't include any income that won't be used specifically for this project or anything that has already happened. Tell us about your support in kind. So Rebecca would have put we are getting a rehearsal space from the Queen's Theatre at a commercial rate of la 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 la. Mm, yeah. And that was fixed by the theatre. And verified by the website, like, belt yeah. breakers, 
because actually that you get quite a lot of word count for this question and I don't really it's one of the strange ones where the word count feels quite generous so um but like another thing that we put in was um the rental of our own instruments because we're using our, our own stuff so we just took what uh, the actor muso rate would be on an equity contract that for music uh, musical instrument hire um stuff that you would never even think about like that that you are actually loaning to the project that you'd normally have to pay for wear and tear on things um so here the type of expenditure oh yeah that's in the wrong box but all the money all the things that you're spending go into that list you can also put some of your own money in that would be a private income if you've got to i mean traditionally when it was like 10 percent people would put in money if they had it a figure of their own money which you also can you can do but that 10 percent you don't need it anymore so i wouldn't i wouldn't worry tell us how you will manage the budget for this project and about your previous experience of managing budgets so say you're going to have regular cash flow meetings your uh, your rebecca you had a separate account didn't you a mentor contingency fund similar managing a project as an artist or in previous roles so you might have had similar you might have managed the budget in a different way and if you haven't had experience of managing budgets like rebecca said get somebody to mentor you to have so that you can have regular meetings or if you've got a partner like the queen's theater you could have the finance you could have regular meetings with the finance director to help you manage it and numbers are good here as well like if i think i was able to give um an example of the cost of what an overall budget would have been for like a four week touring facilitation workshop that i'd produced mm. through leading mm. edge arts project so if you can say and that you've kind of handled some, somewhere in the region of the cash that you're asking for, um, that might be handy. And especially if you tot it up, you'll start to realise that actually you probably have um, produced and, and handled quite a lot of things just up until now. Like I know Jamie's here, um, and just thinking about Jamie, you and you ran the um, summer schools and you manage those projects, for example, any of those kind of projects that, because you would have been financially responsible for them. I think we, and we've probably done much more than we imagine that we have. Okay, cool. Tell us how you've worked out the costs in your project budget, including the cost of any purchases. So that's the research, the guidance, that's um, ITC rates, just so they know that you haven't made it up. Mm you're just putting some figures out of the out of the air fair pay we're committed to making sure that those who work in the arts and culture are properly and fair paid that's why you need to pay yourselves please read please read the fair pay section for more information have you used any recognized pay guidelines to work out pay for those involved union rates itc uk theatre um that's the fair pay that's all right tell us how you calculated the fees in your budget that's also based that can be on the itc rates or you've decided to have a, a company wage then other people including the delivery of my project as work as volunteers i'm aware of my statutory responsibilities management we will look at your answers to these questions we will think about if the activity is realistic and well planned like having a real, realistic tool schedule if the application shows your ability to manage the activities successfully if the team delivering the project has a track record of managing similar activity if the activity is supported by appropriate partnerships if plans to evaluate the activity are, are appropriate so if you're working with other people to support the management we'd like to know about their role and what, whether they're involved and whether their involvement is confirmed so you have a little tell us about your partners experience so if you would you could look rebecca looked up the blurb about the queen's theater and put down our blurb there and i think we and you looked up the blurb around outer limits as a as a talent development program mm -hmm. so you would use those um or ask them you, you know to write if it's somebody who's you know not a big organization that you might need to ask them to help you 
um, write this answer for them. Uh, here you put in all of your partners, partner, main contact, they might contact them. So don't put somebody in there that, that doesn't know about the project because I do get contacted from time to time. Management location, we're interested in where the projects we support are happening and that because there is a kind of, they try to balance out all the activity across the UK and whether it involves touring. So if you're touring, and that you can don't worry if you're not activity that doesn't involve touring i think you take these and you some I, tour I, I said that um i clicked that we're not involving touring because even though the overall goal is to do some touring right at this moment in time we're not so i said we weren't yeah some touring and other types of activities so you choose those um management activity plan so all the planning you've done to date Nothing that is included in the funding. This is really important. If you spend time in the project or paid for work, so you just put everything in there that you have done on the project, all the details. And I told Rebecca to do this. It's a really good trick, this one. If you've spent time on the project or paid for work or, or, or pay, uh, spent time on the project or paid for or paid for something, work out how much and put it in here. So if your time, you spent two months on a project at 500 pounds a week, you put it in there. Or if you've done a week of producing on the project prior to this, you put it in there, you put 500 quid. You, and, and what you say is you put in a little phrase to go, we have invested uh, this amount of time, this amount of, um, uh, uh, technical equipment or instruments, all of that, which comes to a figure of, and you'll be surprised how much it is. It will come, it might be £20,000 by the time you actually get to it, because lots of artists invest so much of their time and their own money in projects. And then the Arts Council go, oh, they're only asking for £15,000, and they've saved us twenty already. And they've made this really wonderful thing that's just arrived at this perfect time to invest in and we'll have this brilliant life. So I, I wouldn't, that doesn't mean you have to do that. I'm just saying if you have, then tell them how much that is, what that is equivalent, the equivalent of in, in our lovely pound. This, um, this section was the most fun to write because it felt like, you know, when you see a film and the and the lawyer gives like the closing statements, this is how this section felt to me. This is like, this is what it all comes down to. I've done so much stuff already on this thing. Please, 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 can I just have a bit of money to finish it off? So, um, and even things like meet, I think we listed all the, all the venues that we'd had meetings with pre lockdown and stuff as well, just to kind of say we, we were sort of on a trajectory and then COVID happened, so please help us to regain that momentum. And like thinking time and how long it's taken you to come up with the idea as well. You know, it might have, it might be, I have thought about this project for two years. Yeah, I mean, we added, we added together our time and I think we actually put about 29 grand down in the end, something okay. like that. It's eye-watering when you think about it. And it's not, we, we hadn't spent any of our actual human money, I don't think, other than maybe buying instruments, but, um, yeah, if you think about all of the time we spent WhatsApping each other and thinking about it and kept you up at night and yeah. Yeah, it's really important they know that as well. And also how much, how invested you are in the project if you spent a lot of time on it as well. That really shows that it's going to happen as well. Project timeline, don't, so you put all the activity in there, which is a meeting with a phoning, uh, at casting, putting a casting announcement out, doing the auditions, or a meeting with the choreographer two weeks in advance, mm -hmm. or um, the finance cash flow meeting. You put it in absolute, the more detail you can put in there, the better, because it, it goes, oh, they go, this, they know what they're doing. They've really thought this through on every aspect of what it's going to do to take this project, to do this project. Um, make sure anything that you've said you'll do as part of your management goes in your project plan. Yeah, 
yeah it's just again belt and braces so like yeah cash flow meeting every thursday if that's what you said you'll do put it in your project plan because it also helps you if you get the fund to be able it can feel a bit overwhelming if you suddenly get this thing you've been trying to get for a really long time then you're like what do i do now so you can go back to your plan and use it as a step-by-step -step guide please estimate the results of your project in the categories below Commissions period, number of performance, yeah, so that's quite straightforward. Period of employment for artists and creatives. I per, um, it's a bit like actors weeks. We count actors weeks at theatres. If you've got three actors working for three weeks, you put nine actors weeks. Do you see what I mean? Nine weeks rather than three weeks. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's the overall. It's the overall yeah. amount of employment that. Amount of employment, yeah. Um, number of sessions of education training. These were quite straightforward. Uh, tell us how you will evaluate your project. This is really important. I would you put as many things in there as you possibly can. Regular self evaluation. You get evaluation from your partners pre project, mid project, after evaluation with creatives pre-production during the production have a debrief session afterwards feedback from participants and audiences that you can get stuff from uh, your forum you can get surveys think of as many ways that you can um, anecdotal conversations with audiences after the performance you write that down as feedback as well, things that were said to you is equally okay. So anything that influences, but you also want to be making sure that you're soliciting the feedback as well, so you can evaluate whether the project was successful or not. Another, we did, um, um, we thought that we would do um, kind of like uh, anonymous feedback forms for young people, because the feedback they give me, if I say, can you t please feedback to me, that they're gonna feel less able to be honest. If, if they didn't think it was very good, it's important that, that they can give us ways in order to make it better. So I think it just makes your feedback more legitimate. If you can think of ways of allowing people to be as honest about their experiences as possible. Yeah, it's a terrifying thing to do, but actually when you do it, it makes the work better and you develop as well. So I, I would embed it into the whole, into the whole process. Um, and then that is the end of it. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Thank you, Rebecca, for staying with us. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's been really lovely to have your um, input and particularly as you've just recently done one. Um, it's five to eight. So I'm not going to open it up to questions. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that let that percolate. Go back and have a look at it. If you all grabbed those links in the chat. If you haven't got them just for that document and anything else and have a little dig around them. And then come back at the next session. Which I can't remember when it is. Um, let me have a quick let's in a few weeks. Don't feel overwhelmed. It's a yeah, lot. It's a it lot. It is a lot. But just let it let it filter. So we've got another session on the 12th of February. So have a little dig around. And you can always, if you're not coming to the session, you can always uh, pop me an email. Let that distill have a go back to it and then we'll have a really a, a good session at the beginning of the next um zoom where where we can answer some answer some more questions is that all right i don't um can you hear me yeah i don't have that chat as, as, as again is lost so um i would need that um those links again i think i can i'll just cut and paste and put them back in Thank you. How are we feeling? How are you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah, very, very informed and everything's a lot more clear now. Thank you. It just yeah, definitely a bit overwhelming. A bit overwhelming, yeah. Mm. 
try yeah. to work in the best way that your brain like i said to you forms and computers i find re- like this is one of my things it's a big spider diagram that i've drawn stuff with right so it's like just draw st- if you're better on paper and you're a bit screened out just do all of your planning and thinking and dreaming with pencils and colors mm. and just try to make it as nice as possible for yourself because it can feel very clinical sometimes and um yeah i think i i, I tore myself to pieces just do, trying to do everything on google docs and now i'm doing a, a new one starting from scratch i'm going about it in a whole new way because i'm thinking how am i gonna um enjoy try to enjoy it i know it sounds wild because you might be like it's a budget what do you mean enjoy it but just try to enjoy it and dream dream about what you could be making um yeah i think that's a really you've mentioned that you just said that word uh, like three or four times i think it's absolutely right is that don't uh, let you must dream dream first and then come to this this must not be the primary focus the project is the primary focus a dream around that project and i think what you have to do is just take this bit at a time a little bit at a time go back to it a little bit at a, well whatever suits you but i think don't feel that you have to do this all in one and no digest all of this in one go because we'll come back to it you sort of have to come back to it again and again and again which is what we're going to do over these two over the next two sessions because these four artists are going to write a draft and then we're going to go through it and then they're going to write another draft so we're going to go through the application again and again and again (laughs) and all and all tackle it together so there's loads more to unpack you don't feel as if right okay that's everything and this will be up online somewhere so you can always come back to this as well this will be on our playlist on the queen's theater youtube account brilliant thank you thank you so much and if i just have the four artists stay in for just one minute afterwards so i'm gonna have to kick you out i'm afraid thanks everyone take care Thanks for sharing the Friday evening. Thank, Thank you. you. So helpful. Thank you. Rebecca. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios. You're going to have to send yourselves out. Yep. Farewell. Bye bye. Bye bye. So Anne, Chrissy, Mia, am I freezing? I am freezing. Oh God. Oh, you are there. I did froze, and everybody was still in there. Sally, Emily. Emily, you're writing your application, aren't you, as well? Emily? Has she gone? Gonna kick her out. Put in the waiting room. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, brilliant. Are you right? Yeah, good. It was really informative. Yeah, there's a lot to think about, but it was really, it was really great. I think I might need to watch this video about 20 times when I'm doing it, but it was... Great. I just 